What's going on, everybody? I believe I should be live and good to go here. As we kick off part two of this, make sure everything's working real quick. All right, I believe we are good to go. Got to get loaded up where we left off and carry on. Seth says you have a face, so I have been told. But don't believe everything you see on the internet, as they say. Thomas says looks good to me. Awesome. Fernando says love you, man. Love you too, buddy. KW says good morning. What's going on? Ugh. Okay. Do I have sound? I feel like I'm not here in the game. Happy Friday, guys. Okay, people say they can hear it, but I'm actually not hearing anything myself. But as long as everybody else can hear it, sure. Okay. So, we are headed over this way to find Carlac and deal with the... the Centaurum that are over there. You Tommy says, looking forward to Shadow Gambit, as am I. That is launching on the really. 17th, I believe. Find the on a humble specimen, oh, you? there we go. I finally got some sound on the from the game. Uh, John says, I made it in time. Hi, Mort. How's it going, man? All right. <laughs> John said, happy face reveal, everyone. That's become like an ongoing joke because I show my face so little. But I've had to explain it so many times that people have just kind of co-opted it as a thing to say. Uh, Eastside, Deli asked if I can get a recap of where we left off. Uh, yeah, sure. Fair enough. Probably a good place to start. Uh, right now we've got four of our 12 levels. We've got Fighter, Rogue, Warlock, Ranger. Nothing too crazy as far as a build goes. We're trying to use bows, uh, utilizing dexterity and everything to try to make use of our arrow types, since that's uh, probably about as good as we're going to get in terms of an actual build with the Jack of All Trades run, which is where we try to multi-class into every single class available in the game for an achievement, which so far has been going pretty well, but we are still very early on. Matthew says, I always watch your videos at 1.75 speed, so it's weird to hear you at normal talking speed. Yeah, that's that's fair. So, uh, for those who don't know, I live in the rural south where a common stereotype is that people kind of talk slow here, which is not untrue. Uh, so, I, I hear something to that effect pretty often. Because I do talk kind of slow. Uh, what inspired the channel logo? Uh, I like skulls. That's, that's pretty much it. That's not a lot of uh, big deciding factors there. All right, let's save before we talk to Carlek. I need a quick word. One horn. As a reminder, this we're kind of skipping through most of the story been... stuff. Oh, fuck me. Just trying to get the achievement mostly. I'm Carlek. I'm well absurd. Met, the latest yappy little dog. I like her. Okay, so Karlak is being hunted down by paladins of Zeriel from the Hells, or uh, paladins, not literally, but they are pretending to be paladins, I should say. <laughs> John says deep in response to my logo explanation. Uh, what's going on, B Vargas? Um, B Next says, is this going to be an any percent speedrun? No, not really. Like, it's not deliberately a speedrun. Um, I mean, we're going kind of quick by default, but it's not like intentionally trying to go speedrun levels of fast. Okay, so I'm going to come up here and collect everything from the toll house, but before we go in, we will go grab Carlac. There's a lot of good loot to be had around here, though. Namely, a soul coin sitting on the roof, which is kind of odd. You're 
John says I missed Carlac until nearly Act Two. It's I mean she's relatively easy to miss. She's kind of up here in a corner. Like if you don't if you don't happen to go like in this specific spot, you can run by her pretty easily. Eastside Deli asks about the burrow holes all over the game. I'm assuming you're talking about the holes for druids that uh, they can use. They can slip into other forms and uh, walk through them. And then I haven't tried it because I haven't had a class that does it, but I would assume some of the animal familiars probably could go through there as well. Luke says, where do you live? Uh, I live in Tennessee. Threefold says, yeah, familiars can't use them. Yeah, I I hadn't actually tried. I just figured, like, maybe one of the smaller ones, like the rat, might have been able to. Um, but the druids are, like, who they're for, so... Seems like a little bit of a miss that you can't send, like, rat familiars in, though. And speaking of, I actually think there's one right over here, if my memory serves. Yeah. And that'll lead you inside. Uh, Jimmy2 says, as someone who's never played D&D, &D, how should I tackle BG3? Um, pretty much however you would like to, honestly. I think... So this is a, a game that's, like, focused big on role-playing. I think people get a little too caught up in, like, the do this build, that build kind of thing. And that stuff's fun, obviously. I make a lot of content based on that. But it's it's just so much of something that's just unnecessary compared to what people seem to think. Does BG3 give me the same excitement that Wrath of the Righteous does? Yeah, I think that's uh, safe to say. I think the last time I covered a game this much was Wrath of the Righteous, and then Divinity Original Sin 2 before that. So I think it's safe to say it's pretty exciting stuff. KW says Gash's form can go through those holes, apparently. Again, not something I've tried, but cool to hear. John says, do I much prefer the pen and paper TTRPG? Uh, no, not really, honestly. Like, I'm definitely a video game guy. I played the TTRPG a lot in, like, high school at a uh, comic shop that had, like, tables and stuff people could use for that. But I vastly prefer video games. And like most adults, I struggle to find enough time with other people outside of just working to do a TTRPG session. So it's video games all the way for me. All right, before we go in here and deal with these guys, we need to go grab Karlak. We will swap out uh, Shadow Heart for Karlak real quick. I don't plan on using Karlak all the time, but it makes sense here. Would I ever play these types of games with a controller? We uh, not by choice. We have to increase our camp provisions now that we have Karlak along. If you're sure, fine. If you dismiss Shadowheart, her relic automatically gets handed to you and it comes up in dialogue. Why are we slowing down? Maddie Khan says, I hope they had a quick companion swap feature. Um, I mean, you can kind of go to camp and swap them out whenever. I so I don't, I don't think the system they have here is bad, but I take your meaning. I'd love to, thanks. Right, level her up real quick. Her default um, bear heart one is pretty good. <laughs> is it 100% completion if I don't use a controller? Listen, uh, you gotta you gotta cut a corner somewhere, and here it's gonna be for using a controller. <laughs> uh, Bushfield says, never heard of my channel before, but watched my warlock and cleric guides and really enjoyed them. I'm glad. Uh, people seem to respond really well to those. I'm glad people enjoyed them. They were a lot of fun to make. <laughs> TFC says, nice to put a face to my voice. Um, did I unlock the last two achievements? Uh, so I have three left to go. This is probably the one that's going to take the most work. 
that we're not quite there yet. If I have any gear, I can give Karlak real quick. Yeah, she's pretty much good to go. Should be fine for this one fight anyway. Let's get going. Because sometimes I forget I'm not playing on Tactician here. We are on Balanced, so it's a little bit easier. Save before we go in, though. Time to press ahead. Air says, glad to catch you streaming. I appreciate it. It's nice of you to say. How similar Please. is Baldur's Gate 3 to no. Divinity 2? Um, it's not really. Please. Especially since Divinity 2 is a third-person action game from the 2010s. But obviously that's a joke because I know you mean Original Sin 2. But... Uh, I don't think they're very alike at all, but, I mean, they have structural similarities due to the engine and things. Is difficulty customizable beyond those three options? Uh, no. It's just those three options, really. I mean, there's some other stuff you can change that might help you out theoretically, but, uh, you know, like karmic dice, that kind of thing, but no, not not really. Zara, all right, please. these guys are actually servants of Zeriel trying to, to death. pull Carlax back to the hells. Leave us. Again. Okay, so first, let's send... Uh, play Zell in. Excellent. Try to deal with this hunter, who's really annoying. <laughs> Then we will close distance. Oh, no. That way we can sneak attack this guy. Not that we'll do a ton of damage, but still better than nothing. Gale can come in. We'll do a magic Tall missile just because. <laughs> We're going to hold off on the rage because there is a mage up there that's going to come in. Oh, he took Karlak out and he critter for like 60 damage, I think. Jeez. Have I tried Glyph of Warding? Is it any good? Um, It's, it's all right. Uh, it's not something I like to use personally, but there's nothing wrong with it. Okay, so magic missile this guy down. Time to push my luck again. Broke her concentration on hold person and sneak attack, bow attack should pretty much do it. Don't need to luck of the far realm. Beautiful. Not gonna lie, Karlak, you were uh, really disappointing in the fight that you insisted on. <laughs> Threefold says, how are you doing so much? Or, uh, wow, you're doing so much damage. Playing on Tactician and things are not this bursty. Um, if anything, they bursted me. Good grief. Uh, David Fair donated $10. Says, thank you with a sticker. I appreciate it. That's very kind of you. Gestalt says, will I do a solo run? I am certainly going to attempt it. I think that will be an interesting challenge. But yeah, I, I plan on giving it a go. Sword of Justice. And some scale mail. Alright, so let me take these guys outside real quick and then we'll talk to Karlak because she does this really annoying thing after this fight yeah oh is it gonna skip it because she she technically went down I think it is what? won't be seeing my mechanic anytime the first time I faced down oh that's super funny so <laughs> uh, normally after that fight she has a conversation where she gets uh super over the top about having killed those paladins and then like runs around catching everything on fire with her extreme heat but I guess because she went down during that fight it skipped it Eric says love your cleric paladin video gonna give that a go awesome I really enjoyed that playthrough I'm glad people enjoyed it as well Alejandro Toros donated $10 said love what you do bro keep doing you thoughts on doing lore content I will have some lore content um, I can't say too much on that yet but, yeah, there, I have a plan to do something to that effect. 
John says, yeah, her raging in that toll house was a favorite. Um, like, it's it's a funny moment, but the fact that she can catch your people on fire is very uh, annoying. <laughs> Don't be shy. All right. Never a dull We're going to hold on to her for a bit while we loot this place because we can take her back to the Druid's Grove once we find some infernal iron. Is this your which first I time believe we find in here, if my memory serves. We don't have any yet, but she has a quest there. It is much more lively than the Gif Yankee slates. Mort's uh, Funke says, Mort, Just nice to see a face. Nice to escape. be here with You're everybody. <laughs> Badahoon says, is this the face reveal stream? Yes, why not? This is the first time anyone has ever seen my face. I actually wear a mask even in my personal life. Eric says, could I play Cleric Paladin as a dwarf instead? Uh, yeah, yeah. So, uh, something I mentioned in that video is that the Dragonborn thing was purely just for me. Like, the the, cla the race, rather, for that build is not relevant at all. Dragonborn doesn't really do anything special for you there. It just looks super cool because we were uh, doing Tiamat. <laughs> David says, I thought you were a talking skull in real life. Uh, yeah, that people get me confused with Mort's pretty similar guy. Okay, so there are some traps we gotta pay attention to in the basement, but we can get some great loot down here. A lot of camping supplies that we're handing off to Lazelle, which is always nice. So something about uh, tactician mode is that it actually increases the amount of camping supplies you need to rest by double, so you need 80. So the funny thing about playing on balanced here is I actually have so many more camping supplies than I needed for that tactician run. <clears throat> Vera says, hi. Hello. Cody McFadden says, is Jack of all trades the every class achievement? It is, yes. We are four of 12 so far. <laughs> my dog's wandering around me. I hope he doesn't knock my green. <laughs> okay. We have the toll house key because we picked it up outside, so we can unlock that. Easy. The camera here is being weird. Is hungry for blood. Okay, so we got all these vents, and if we trigger a trap, we might have a problem. Egon says, "Hey, Morty, how's it going, man?" Okay, so all these vents, uh, rather than disarm them, it's easier to just take these uh, barrels and stuff and just block them. There is where that burrow outside leads into. So if you wanted to. Uh, Go straight in here. Maddie says this is for the 12 multi class achievement. Yes, it is. That is our primary goal, as it were. Now, in this basement, we can pick up a ton of loot from all these crates and everything, but the main stuff is in this room over here. Be wary. This place is trapped. Thanka says, hey, nice to see you for the first time. Love your vids. I appreciate it. Glad people enjoy them. Fine. Better be careful not to trigger that thing. Okay, that should be that. Loot all these barrels if we can, see if they got anything useful. Actually, we're going to take that water. Might come up later. John says, took me a long time to realize left alt doesn't, uh, left alt doesn't highlight everything. And that is true. It only highlights uh, some stuff and what is in your visual range. So if your character can't see it, it won't highlight it at all. And then it doesn't even then highlight everything. Okay. So in order to unlock this door, we have to sit people down in both of these chairs. Which pulls this door down, but... There is a trap. 
right there. Just that as turns I these on. But again, we can just cover up the vents. And it's problem solved. And then we can get access to this great axe plus one. Some gold, some healing potions. And gloves of heroism, which isn't super useful for us because we're not going to be using our channel oath a ton. Which is a paladin thing, for those who don't know. Oh. Okay, so. Oh yeah, I gotta grab that. Metallic helmet. Should pretty much do it though. Christian asks if warlocks get interaction with their patron, or is it just will? It's pretty much just will. Uh, based on your subclass, there are a few unique ones, like uh, interactions, uh, like dialogue type stuff, but the directly speaking to your patron and everything is mostly just will. All right, so... We will grab the Great Axe plus one because it's a little bit lighter on my inventory, and we'll grab Making that over sweat. to Carlac for when we switch her out. Shouldn't have wished to live in more interesting times. The gloves don't do us much good, so we'll probably so wind up just selling those, but we will throw the helmet down here for later. We'll probably wind up giving that to Shadowheart when we go get her again. Is that blood? Okay. So that's that, and then what path lies before me? We can't do Carlac's other thing because we don't have the uh, infernal iron right now. But once we find it, we'll probably go do that real quick because that's just easy experience. We should find that before too long. There's a couple in Act One. But we'll go tag Shadowheart back out. It's her, Karlak, the Archdevil's servant. Uh, must rest in camp. Why do I even need for uh, Jack of All... What do I even need to do for Jack of All Trade Run? You, uh, you just need to multi-class into one of each level. Or uh, one of each class, I should say, for each level. Not a huge deal. Hey, Thought I it'd be fun to stream, though. Road says Infernal Iron is Goblin Treasure. Yeah, there's uh, there's more than one. Um, there's a couple in Act 1 you can find, but one of them is in the Goblin Camp, yeah. Marcus says, can you do the Goblin Camp at level 4? Yeah, you can. Pretty likely to, if anything. Really? Really? Oh. Okay, then we'll grab Shadowheart, who is over here. May the darkness protect you. All right. Okay, and then we will pass. The Whatever comes, I'm ready. Helmet over to her, just for a little bit extra. Doesn't do us a ton though. And then technically, that's one extra AC, but um, you get to do radiant damage to some things with Oak Father's embrace. So we'll leave that on for now. No time to rest. Okay. These boots have seen everything. Gonzo says, what's wrong with the dog? He's just wandering around. Gon says, best girl, Auntie uh, Ethel, rather. Um, I mean, I don't think I would agree, but do you, John? Have I tried out Sentinel Polearm uh, Master Repelling? Um... I haven't messed with it here in the game, but Polearm Master is in. I don't know exactly what it looks like, but I, I know what you're referring to, yeah. Okay. Now we're going to head over here to one of the bigger Knoll fights. Which can be a little bit tricky. Do I feel that melee is the strongest in Baldur's Gate 3? Eh, it just depends on what you're doing and what you're fighting. Right. Oh. Yeah, 
So what I want to do is come up around the side. So you can kind of pull all the knolls up here into uh, a tight line coming towards you, which makes it a little easier. Damien says, how do I fight boredom in 100%? Well, I mean, this is my job. Uh, I make money doing it, so that's a great motivator on its own. But in general, I just love playing video games. Zach says, yo, always stream with a face cam. Yeah, usually. I find it's uh, nice. But, okay, so. Save before we do this. But... Got some fight with some gnolls here. There's quite a few of them. That's a really looking shadow. What's next? Have to keep low. Should be able to sneak up here fairly far before I get spotted or anything like that. Time to press ahead. Hoping I one shot him, but I left him with two health. Uh, Joshua says I had a rough go at this first when I was still learning. Um, this fight in particular can be a little rough uh, if you don't know it's coming up because of all the hyenas, the gnolls. But like, if you can set yourself up in a good position, it's easy to like funnel them into you and just kind of um, like. So basically, what I'm going to do here is set cloud of daggers, and they're all going to come running up this hill and get hit by it as an example. Gonzo says, what class am I playing? All of them. John says, the cam helps with the quarterly face reveal. Listen, I got to drive those metrics somehow. You know? Okay. their turn. That was weird. Hope I didn't space through it while I wasn't reading chat or something. Okay, so... Okay, it says, love your reviews. Greetings from Poland. Enjoying the game themselves. Awesome. Glad to hear it. John says, thanks for putting me on Cloud of Daggers. Yeah, it's really helpful. Okay, so, is it just skipping these guys' turns? Like, what is happening right now? Hold on, guys, I gotta reload. It's just skipping all of my guys' turns. That's really weird. Awesome, Dura says, greetings from Luxembourg. Love your content. Thanks, I appreciate it. Always glad to see people from around the world. Uh, A9WAG says, AI really makes Cloud of Daggers useful. Yeah, they have a habit of just running right through it. Blackets will be done. That won't draw any attention. Okay, we have to try this again because the, uh, the game this bugged out on me there and just wasn't giving me a turn. So we will try that again. What's my favorite spell in the game so far? Uh, that quest reward you get for 
um, doing the necromancy of Thay thing that gives you all the summonable ghouls. Maybe a bit of a cheat answer, but that thing is ridiculous. I love it. Pleasant Skullman says, also imagine you have a few European viewers. Um, yeah, I would imagine so. Um, I upload super early in the morning compared to everybody else, like here, which, you know, is later in the day there, so that checks out. Um, okay, so... Dr. Sheeta says, hello, how's it going? Okay, let's get this rolling. Now, let's switch to these guys. What difficulty am I playing on? We're doing this on balanced, just because we're going for that specific achievement. Whatever comes, I'm ready. Okay. And then Lazel. Try to finish that one off. Nice. Okay, then everybody else will wait till they run out. Hear that? Someone's fighting the Eric nose. says, indeed, perfect Who's lunchtime content. Indeed. Don't Glad people enjoy fool, it. Lad. Shut Steve says the stream is perfect while <laughs> working entering Leave data. Nice. To them that don't value their own skin. Oh. Okay. So, Shadow Heart. Not doing anything because you technically entered con uh, combat just a minute ago. Same thing with these two. My dog is next to me, just like stretching and walking around. <laughs> You're wondering what I'm looking at over there. All right, so now we can start doing other things. We will start chipping away at this thing's health. Um, you don't necessarily have to kill this thing completely. The, the big boss enemy there, though. Dr. Cetus has learned so many things thanks to you. Glad to hear it. That's kind of the purpose of the channel, teaching people how to play this stuff. Charge Charles Gilliland <laughs> joined as an officer. Glad to see it. I appreciate it. Thank you. Okay. So we will, with our very low chance to hit there, I think we'll try to, I think we'll try to go for it just for the divine smite. Nice, like that, yeah, that was exactly, that was perfect. <laughs> oh. Amin says, I was wondering why Baldur's Gate requires a lot more resources than DOS 2. Um, so uh, this is a much more advanced game. Uh, like regardless of how they look, it just is. <laughs> it's a lot more cinematic and things as well. So, I mean, there's a variety of reasons. Arjun says never knew more extremes. Uh, it's certainly a rarity. I don't do it often by any means. Okay, so we're gonna drop Cloud of Daggers right here on top of these guys. Okay, so... He's gonna kill this hyena. Ah, right, we'll leave it right there for now. I don't want to use action search just yet. Kegurna says, hey, how's it going? Uh, so far, it's going pretty well. Out of daggers, nice. Warcaster. All right. We'll try to finish off that hyena with you. Out of daggers, just killed two people. Fantastic. Again. Missed. Of course we did. Go ahead and use Inquisitor's mic though. Out of daggers claims a third victim. Eat 
try oh, come something on. else. On the move. Get the there you go. <laughs> Aiming wasn't wanting to work there. Okay. Now we just gotta finish off this one, which won't be too hard. And we'll be good to go. Normally it triggers like a little cutscene. Parasite in that corpse. You should take a look. With uh, the boss there, because that blend the actually has a parasite, but for some reason it didn't trigger. Uh, Steve Rogers says, "Happy that you do your videos after 100%. Nice to see." Uh, yeah, no, it's uh, it definitely helps the channel out for sure, and I enjoy doing it along the way. So, win-win for everybody. Revenox says your guides are awesome. If you missed it, wondering if you use Karmic Dice. Uh, it's on by default, so I'm pretty sure it's on right now. Like when you start a new playthrough, it's usually on. I haven't noticed like a huge difference with it on or off, to be honest, but I can see it either way. Risen Road's more dangerous than ever. You're the first. Okay, this guy's in Tarum. Tell the fellow on the door. Little sir. Doesn't change the plan, though. Uh, we'll you can push into like what the survivors. cargo is, but he'll give you access to the Zintarum hideout either way. But I, the Tarrants are the currency of the. This is the point when a clever if you, like uh, you accepts my gratitude and walks if away. If you get like if you take the cargo yourself, this guy actually winds up getting killed back at the hideout, um, and it actually makes things a little bit easier if you don't pass those checks. Now we're going to loot everything, though. That's a great flail, but the problem is uh, the effect on it can turn you mad if you don't continue hitting something every turn, so it's a little difficult to use it because it has a pretty big potential downside. Throw that great sword on her. Still alive. So that's perfect. Uh, Sigvald Injustice 2 Mobile donated uh, 25 of a currency. I'm sorry, I'm not familiar with it. And said, hey, man, you're one of my favorite internet people. Wish you the best. Glad to hear it. That's kind of you to say. I appreciate the donation, man. Ozdemora said, considering my first playthrough will be as a bard, what companions would I recommend? Uh, whichever ones you want. Uh, bard is going to be able to do so much on its own thanks to all of its uh, skills and things. You can kind of just do whatever. So I, I really wouldn't worry about it too much. I would just pick the ones that seem the most interesting to you personally. All right, we're going to recover a few of our spell slots, specifically level one, because we're still doing pretty good on level threes. Or uh, level two, rather. Okay, and now loot everything else around. Never wanted the easy path. And then we'll head back to Joaquin's Rest to talk to the Zintarum for a moment. Uh, Gavin says, do I AFK in games at 100%? Uh, comparing playtime to yours, I seem to be more inefficient. So something to keep in mind there is like, I play a lot of games with the express intention of 100%ing them, and you'd be surprised just how much that mindset will save you time. Because, like, there's not a lot of time I play a game where I'm not deliberately working towards something, like, achievement-wise, and that's going to cut so much time off of basically anything you do. It sounds silly, but, like, the first step of that is always just making a conscious effort to do it. Uh, Dexter says, wait, what achievement is this? Uh, it is indeed the level one in all classes achievement. Rapid course. Oh, sorry. Reading the wrong one. Uh, do I plan a build guide for the companions if I make build decision for them? Uh, yeah, so kind of. Um, typically, I grab Gale and Lazelle for like just regular playthroughs because their sort of standard build is incredibly powerful on its own, so you don't have to do much. Like Evocation Wizard 
and Battlemaster Fighter are just really strong. Like, you can take those Tactician without multi-classing. They're very I'm good so all by the themselves. So it's not really necessary, but like... For instance, Shadowheart, uh, I usually mix up a little bit and give her some levels in Paladin to make her more useful. Tim Clemens donated 25 pounds, said thanks for the great content. Please keep it up. I certainly will. Thank you for your donation. That's very kind of you, man. Oh. Uh, still watching says why 17 decks and 15 charisma if you can't uh, take ASIs. Um, mostly because there is other ways to increase it. I wonder what's past this. Whether or not we actually get around to doing them, but that's just the way I like to roll the stats. All right, and there is a little extra loot. Reason's Grasp is uh, great for Karlak, as they're the only one that's doing rage, really. For everybody else, not so much. Everybody kind of blocked me in here. Do you get this achievement in multiplayer? I have no idea. Sometimes multiplayer avoids stuff like that. I, I wouldn't know, honestly. I haven't even gotten it regularly, so <laughs> hard to say how it works specifically. Joel says Astarian seems prime for a respec. Yeah, so one... One thing I will say is that most of the companions have stat spreads that I wouldn't use personally, and respecting them just for that can certainly be as valid a reason as any. Omar says, what's the achievement? Uh, one level in every class. Without respecting. Okay, so we're pretty much good there. Now we'll head back out, clear the map a little bit, before heading back to Joaquin's Rest. Would I recommend playing this on the Steam Deck or waiting, if that's the only place? Uh, so, I've heard it's good on the Steam Deck, but I just haven't tested it yet myself, so I, I don't know. I've heard it plays well there, I know it got verified... But I haven't tested it out, so I couldn't give you much of an opinion, personally. Cliff said, thanks for answering the question and keep up the great content. That is certainly the plan. So no worries there. <laughs> Jared asked, do I think I could defeat a wolf in hand-to-hand -hand combat IRL? No, no I don't. My strength lies uh, pretty much in playing video games and managing businesses. If it's not one of those two things, I'm probably not going to be very good at it. Uh, Architects asked, how long am I playing for today? Um, I don't know. I have uh, some stuff to do later. Like, at the absolute most, I could play for another five hours before I have to go do some other stuff. Um, but I doubt I'll be live like for that long. <laughs> uh, probably another few hours at least. Omar says, did I go Warlock, Fighter? Uh, so right now we have Fighter, Rogue, Warlock, and Ranger. Okay. So we're going to get stopped by this guy who would normally He's try to blow in. us up. But because okay. we saved the Zentarum guy, we have the password Entry. to get by this guy. He shoots an explosive barrel, which sets off all these fire barrels uh, and can do a ton of damage to you if you're not ready for it. Could I beat a wolf in business management to the death? Uh, yes. Yes, I could. Um, if it came down to 
between me and an actual wolf, which one of us could manage a business until one of us uh, suffered death at the hands of capitalism? I am going me all the way. The wolf does not stand a chance in that arena. Uh, Dr. Cetus says, how do you manage to get all the achievements done? Do I have a roadmap? Like, most of them are done. Um, I only have three left, so the achievements for this game were pretty simple. Like, I'm going to play through it a bunch more after those, but uh, achievements for this game were not a big deal. Most of them are pretty simple. So, uh, I mostly just did a playthrough, save scummed a bunch, did a second playthrough for the evil option, save scummed that a bunch for the other achievements I still didn't have, and that was that was most of them. <laughs> Architect says, what if it's the wolf from Wall Street? Well, that's not a wolf, though. That's Leonardo DiCaprio. Or Jordan Belfont, you know, whichever. whichever. Uh, Steve Rogers says, is there any difficulty achievement? Uh, not specifically for the difficulty. There's one for all of the major endings, and that's about it as far as, like, completing the game goes. There's not any for uh, difficulty specifically, but I already did tactician, so it's whatever. Look at that. Joe Kirkland says you gotta take three levels in DiCaprio, something like that. Omar says, how can I stand having Lazelle on your team? Uh, I enjoy Lazelle quite a bit, actually. Oh, uh, Shikau says, yeah, there is a, there is an achievement for tactician difficulty called Critical Hit. I forgot about it. The, the name of the achievement is Critical Hit. Thanks for mentioning that. I completely forgot about that one. But, uh, tactician difficulty is not that hard, so I wouldn't even worry about it that much. If anything, though, that shows you how little I've been paying attention to the achievements, because most of them have been super easy to grab. That's far enough. What's your business down here? Well, it says how many major Answer endings honestly, are there. There's, there's like five, I would say, major ones, but there's a ton of variation in there. Depending on the choices you made, uh, some transformations you may or may not have done. Looks like a trap there. Hmm. Okay, now we can come down here. What's that if we had not, like, if we had robbed Rugen, he would be over here tied up and about to die. And then I would have to pass a bunch of checks to not also die. But we can save this artist over here who's been captured. You, you need to buy and my pay. And that leads to a really yeah, fun quest right. in the last act well. of the game. Don't you cut a fight? Rumi says, first time you catching you live. Glad to have you Mark here. I appreciate it. This will make you a most heroic likeness. I doubt you've got that kind of dosh line about. And pass a check to... Oh my god, I rolled in that one. I, we should have inspiration though, so it's whatever. But what a terrible time to roll in that one. There it is. That's more like it. What a, what a wild swing. Like <laughs> a nat one to a 30. All right. So maybe I was fishing. Chris from development says, hey, Hopefully Mortem, how's it going? Uh, Michael says, in one of a video, I mentioned DOS 2 was my favorite. Uh, that video is old, for sure. Um, so something that happens is I make a lot of videos. And, like, even my old favorite video ones stay up. But uh, I would say Wrath of the Righteous is my favorite right now. But as for this game topping it, I'm I'm still on the fence. I want to clear it out completely before I make a full decision on that. I'll probably make a video about it when I'm ready to. <laughs> John says a 29 spread with a 20-sided dice is absurd. <laughs> well, that is our build, so it, it pans out. Mr. Siggs, cause can I ask what class you're playing? Uh, we're playing all of them, just every class. We're actually gonna be the best build ever. Pick up the pace. Okay, so that talk to the Zentarum leader. I, our trader can show you some of. We'll get a reward called Harold. 
which is more damage for us. We'll put the Jolt Shooter as Lazel's ranged weapon. I think we're about ready to go do the swamp thing. Yeah. What classes have I specced in so far? Uh, fighter, rogue, warlock, and ranger. Chuckle says, what chat do I read, YouTube or Twitch? I'm only live on uh, YouTube, so pretty much just the one there. Uh, yeah, we're still in Act 1, LGK was asking. Um, we're getting towards the end of it, though. We've got this to do, this to do, and then some other stuff. So we probably won't finish Act 1 today, but we'll get pretty close. Benjamin says, am I trying to get the plus one ASI from the hag? Uh, ideally. Um, the problem I have with the, the plus one from the hag, for those who don't know, it's, it's possible to get a plus one to any ability score from the hag, but sometimes I kill her so quickly that the conversation to do so doesn't pop up. And I'm not so concerned about it that I need to reload a save 20 times. Okay, so there should be an ability check to clear out this swamp. Uh, well, Chill, see it for what it really spine. is, I should say. You feel like you're being watched. Which we don't have much of a bonus to, to be honest with you. So, yeah, I was like, we might not actually make this one. Not that it matters. The place has. I don't want to spend the inspiration on it. But the swamp isn't what it appears to be. Though much more annoyingly is there's a bunch of traps in the water. I hit those things every time. Even if you see the swamp for what it really is, you'll still run into those traps everywhere. They're annoying. Mostly because they give you that uh, rotting disease. Uh, any build I'm looking forward to playing in my next run? Uh, so somewhat concurrently with this, I've got a druid build going on that I'm going to mix with Barbarian and see how well that works. I'm excited to see how that one plays out, but like that's what I've got next up. It'll probably be a while before that. It's uh, shown off on the channel, though, just because I'm doing this at the same time, so it's going to take a little longer. Omar says, I dislike this area. Yeah, this, I hate those traps in particular. Like, it's such a pain to see all of them. I don't think I've ever gone through here without hitting those traps. It's kind of gotten to just be like a fact of walking through this area for me. But we have this disease, right? However, one of the handy things about having a paladin on us here is that... All gone. All right. Eager for battle. Give everybody a quick potion. Let me work my magic. What to do? This fight over here can be really annoying because of the methods. K Bar asks if I'm a fan of tabletop 5e. Uh, not. A ton. I don't like this system very much, if I'm being honest. Um, the the potential for role playing and what they were trying to do with it, I can appreciate, because it made it a lot more approachable for people, and I think there's a lot of value in that. But uh, as a personal preference, no, I'm I'm not wild about the rule set. Can I kill a dragon win later on? I mean, it's Dungeons and Dragons, man. The answer to that should be obvious. 
Is it possible to be an evil paladin? Yes, you can. Okay, so. These two are the dangerous ones, but they're slow. However, the methods, if they get close to you, uh, will explode, and the ancient methods will summon young methods, which will also explode if they get close to you. Which is very annoying. So that little explosion at the end there, that does a bunch of damage to you if it hits you. <laughs> Jim says, I thought you were saying meth heads. No, not quite. Though I can see the confusion. Nice. That was a good hit. Rodrigo says, I look completely different than what I imagined. Yeah, that's usually how the internet goes. Yeah, so you want to kill the ancient ones as quickly as you can because getting these guys summoned is annoying because, like, I'm going to kill this one and then take damage from it. it would save. Ah, Chuckle says push, then kill it. Uh, yeah, you certainly can. The problem is there's so many of them, it's hard to uh, mitigate it entirely. Uh, like, honestly, here on balance, it's probably not going to be a big deal, but uh, on Tactician, this fight was uh, frustrating. <laughs> Okay, so... Chaco says, will I be doing companion build guides? Um, kind of. So when I do my... Uh... Origin story playthroughs. I'm going to be doing builds for classes based with those characters, so kind of by default, yes. Torment. Yeah, see? All that damage. It's annoying. Alright, that just leaves the one up there, though. And then these guys. Muddy also gives you disadvantage. Alright, the nice thing though is that we can focus our attention on both of them now. But, because we are taking the disadvantage there, we don't have a great chance to actually hit anything. I don't think we're going to get close enough. Yeah, a little too far away to heal those guys. But that's all right. They can just chug a potion next turn. Uh, we're just going to cast Firebolt because we have a very low chance to get here. Yeah. Chief Warlock Ickit says we all, him and his friends, almost got TPK'd on this fight due to a bad Eldritch Blast. Yeah, there can be just some unfortunate moments in this fight, to be sure. second wind him with our fighter ability just to heal up a little bit and try to move farther away. They burn. There we go. 
Alright, that's the methods dealt with. Not yet. And now to get these guys. They're gonna start dealing some damage now, I believe. They are in difficult terrain. Might still take them a little while to get us. Gabriel says they definitely made this fight harder than the EA version. Uh, yeah, it's mostly because of those methods. Like, if it was just these two, it'd be whatever. Alright, so... Don't have a great chance to hit either of them, honestly. I hate missing with spells. Like, it's such a... Like... Well, that sucks, kind of moment. Because you basically waste a spell slot for nothing. Uh, Remy asked what the Jack of All Trade achievement is. That's uh, all 12 classes on a single character without respecking. Chuckle says, I want to see the evil druid path. Um, that's kind of possible, sure. All right. Magic Missile is really coming in clutch for this one. Everybody else can't hit the broad side of a barn. Do I have a planned progression path for Jack of All Trades? Uh, not entirely. I did initially, but... Uh, we've, we're kind of already past, like, the I'm, I know I'm going to start this way type of thing. So where it goes from here, we shall see. Gone with the weave. Okay. Torment. Not going to lie, Gale did, like, most of the work here, guys. We just did not want to go down. Ready and willing. All right. So there's those guys dead. We'll have to long rest after that because we're at a short rest and we took a ton of damage there. At the ready. Remy says, "Cloud of daggers and magic missiles. Missiles are so clutch. Yeah, they really are. Like there's uh." I don't know, it's just something about the AI of this game makes Cloud of Daggers just such high value. It's ridiculous. And Magic Missiles has never not been useful. But you can actually get a once per day insanely strong version of Magic Missiles in the last act uh, called like Student of War or something like that. Um, it's uh, a hidden side quest reward. And it's ridiculous. It's like Magic Missiles, but each of the bolts does like 20 damage. Have I found the potion crafting helpful? Uh, I wouldn't say it's super helpful. Like, it's not bad, but I uh, I don't really find myself using it very often because there's so many resources in such abundance that it's like I, I don't need to use the potion crafting to get them. <laughs> K-Bar says I need to keep my eye out for that gotta. God tier magic missiles. Yeah, it's it's insanely strong. You can only cast it like once per it's short rest or long rest. I don't remember exactly, but uh, you technically get it as a scroll, but if you have a wizard, you can like make it uh, a permanent spell for them. 
waste. Drop our shield out there. Wonder if the gods are watching me. Gonna have to go sell all our junk soon. All right, and then what we came over here for is this wooden crevice, which is annoyingly tied up in tangled vines there. Which gives us our letter to Kaga, which gives us proof that she is up to no good with shadow druids. So before we leave out of the swamp, we're going to go grab the waypoint since the other fights here are by choice. But we're not going to fight Anti-Ethel just yet. Omar says, can you technically burn those vines? Uh, yeah, like if you really wanted to, but you know, why? Video says, Auntie's a tough one, but that plus one is so nice. It really is, um, provided you can get the conversation to proc. Yeah, it's very useful. Okay. You two won't be helping their sister, or doing anything else for that matter. Be you ready. Whoever, or whatever, did this could be close. Traps. Just trying to clear everything out here. This reinforced greatsword is actually not not bad. <laughs> not amazing or anything, but pretty useful. As it does a little more damage. Okay. Video game sophistry says, Morty, have you messed around with the romances, which do I think was most impactful? I, I've done several. Um, there's a couple that are really funny that I don't know. I, I wouldn't necessarily call them hidden, but there's one for an achievement that was hilarious. Uh, Lazelle's is probably my favorite, if I'm being honest. Uh, I enjoyed Shadow Hearts, and I think that's about all the ones I've done personally at the, at the moment. Um, you can fight this frog, and it's, it's a surprisingly difficult fight. Because of reflective mucus, which will reflect projectiles, but also it has an AC of 22, which is insane. Have I run into a visual bug with an exclamation point over Will's head? Uh, sometimes. I've noticed some of the conversations like don't always either show the exclamation point at all, or it will show one when there isn't a conversation to be had. A lot of people saying their favorite romance was the uh, ogre and bugbear, which we saw last stream. <laughs> Willie says the frog gives one XP. Yeah, because it's a frog. It just has insane stats. It's just a little nonsense fight you can do. Okay, so we can come up here, talk to this vampire hunter who, or monster hunter who's looking for a starion. Ah, you can. An old hunter's trick. To, that is why you know how to ask. If she can tell me how, or just as easily find it pressed against our throat. I would not put you in danger. Quest okay. We're about to long rest, then we'll go loot Auntie Ethel's house, but we're not going to fight her just yet, and then we'll go do the goblin camp. Well, uh, we'll go talk to Kaga first, but then we'll do the goblin camp stuff after that. Paul says hello again, Mort. How's it going? 
One horn. The stink of Avernus. Advocatus hey, Barn Diaboli. says they missed that guy completely. Oh, yeah, yeah, it's uh, it's relatively easy. I mean, if you're not walking around the swamp. Karlak, the arch devil Zeriel's gladiator, come to burn the Sword Coast to ash. Uh, so Karlak and Will want to kill each other, but we can keep that from happening. Keep the front. Will's actually a little wheels. misinformed about Karlak. And yet you served. With... No, damn. You. <laughs> ah, I see. It's actually pretty easy to talk him out of that. Glad Will saw sense. Even more glad he... I should speak up. You've been witness to a pantomime. I'm sorry. It means one night soon when you're... Okay, I don't think anybody really has anything to say. Outside of normal conversations we could have anyway. So we shall go to bed. Oh, I'm ready. That's real close to just clearing up on its own, so I'm going to see if it will. But worst case scenario, we will get uh, Shadowheart to clear that for us. Remy says I enjoyed Will as a character, but thought Lazelle and Astarian were our favorites overall. Yeah, I I think most of them are well done. I like I like the rewrites they made to Will. He seems a lot more interesting now, at least to me. Like obviously that's a preference thing, but um, I like him more than I did in early access. I don't and don't you. So here's Auntie have Ethel. One hell's of an apology for me, young man. You know, but I think you gods grant me patience. Eat up, Marina. That wriggler swimming in your. What do you say? Want me to take care of the little beer? I put that is my. So she choice. offers to tell us more about our tadpole in exchange for one of our eyes, which is a terrible deal because it keeps you from critting. Quiet, you and you. But uh, at any time, we can go descend into her secret lair. Where she turns into a hag fully and we can fight her. But she also has a bunch of like fantastic potions just laying around her house. Which are very easy to steal because her house is so big and she tends to wander around. Easy peasy. Can you one shot her before she teleports uh, away? Uh, it's possible to kill her up here, um, but it's it's a pain. So her six health there, uh, it doesn't actually matter. That will change the moment you attack her. Um, but technically, you can kill her before she descends into her lair. It is possible, yeah. All right, so now we're headed back to the Druid Grove to go deal with Kaga. Oh, yeah, so somebody just mentioned this in chat. Uh, Larian posted a bunch of stats today about the opening weekend of the game, and apparently in the opening weekend, only 368 people managed to finish the game, but because I had a review copy, I finished the game before it even launched. So, uh, realistically, I was one of the first people to complete this game, period, which is super cool. Kashel says, is it the same with the eye you can get from Volo? No, actually. The eye you get from Volo is surprisingly useful because it lets you see invisibility. Chuckle says, when is Act 2 mountain or after? Uh, Act 2 technically starts when you step into the Shadow Cursed uh, lands for the first time. Act 1 is the longest by far. Come, Silver. Okay, 
so we will save before talking to Kaga. Though realistically, this fight shouldn't be that hard. But we can basically call her out for being a shadow druid now that we have proof, which leads to a fight. Why are you here? I sent you to Zevlo. What? Then her shadow druid friends show up as they had been wild shaped as these rats. You think yourself quite you, Oladin. But you're as you say, Oladin. But we can pass a check to get Kaga back on our side and prove that, uh, you know, what you're doing is clearly not good. No, you, you don't know what you say. In Shadow, we are purified. Uh, Chief Warlock says uh, they managed to one-shot Anti Ethel. Like, yeah, it's definitely tremble. possible. Like I said, you, like she you can do that. Um, it's just uh, difficult because she's scripted to run away if she gets uh, low health. Pass another easier check. And then Kaga will be on our side for this fight, which is actually pretty helpful. Because then it's like eight versus three. <laughs> Crit. Uh, Brian says you remind me of Marcus from Epic Game, bro. I don't know who that is, but thanks, I suppose. Uh, what happens if you cast a spell magic on the rats? Um, I, you know, I've never tried it, but like realistically, you probably could. Uh, but without the proof, you wouldn't be able to um, turn people onto your side and everything, so I, I imagine it would lead to a more difficult scenario. Okay. Feel my mistress is right. What is her... Sometimes Divine Smite, like the, the basic setup for Divine Smite can be weird. I am fury. I am okay, and then we're going to try to kill this guy before he transforms, which will make our life a little easier. There we go. that critically missed. Nice, and then we're down to one. Shadowheart coming in clutch with the exactly one damage roll. <laughs> well, if I could actually hit something, this fight would be over. Matthew says, where was the proof of her shadow allegiance? Uh, in the swamp uh, next to the woodwoods, you can find a letter that details the fact that she uh, is in league with shadow druids. Uh, yeah, so Shadowheart's not super useful in the early levels. Uh, you really need her later cleric spells to get her to do something that isn't uh, inefficient. Because her, it's because her stat spread is terrible. If you've ever looked at her stats, she has 13 in strength and dex, which sucks.
Moreland says, do I plan on live streaming more playthroughs after this one? Uh, not currently. I don't live stream a ton because I make so many videos, which eats up all my time. But trying to do it here because people wanted to see me play it. Wrath thought me a danger. Seems I've proven him right. My fate lies with sweep. Meanwhile, well, I won't. All right, and that puts an end to them trying to cast the ritual. Which means we can go tell Zevlor he's uh Can't immediate problems have been solved, which grants us a quest Korga reward. From herself. Charmed, Let's true. grab Gale's first level spell slot back. Heal him while we're at it, and then we'll talk to Zevlor. Though before I forget, I keep forgetting to spend the Illithid power. And what I want is psionic backlash. So we're going to make that way. Okay, off to talk to Zevlor. Nox says you can just re-roll and fix her starting stats. Uh, yeah, technically you can respec her and redo her stats if you wanted, which would be incredibly useful even if you decided to keep her as a cleric. Um, because again, her stats are just terrible for a cleric. But uh, we're not doing that here because I don't know if respecing anyone would void this achievement, and I'd rather not risk it, to be honest. And also, you know, where's the fun in that for a stream? I'm told the druids have stopped. All right. Okay, I was, uh, for a second I was like, oh, did I not get the gloves? Yeah, so. These gloves are pretty decent, uh, especially for Shadowheart early on. He's probably going to actually be doing some heals, but you can get uh, resistances from that. On my way. I don't know if you guys can hear it, but I think somebody started mowing their lawn next door. Okay, now we're going to talk to the nice. vendor so I can get rid of some of this junk we've been carrying around. John says, any other meme builds I would like to see someone else devote their time to? Um, not really. Like I think this is like the main one people talk about. Uh, I have, well, something close. But honestly, anything crazy would be fun to see. I'm a little surprised I haven't seen more like, look how ridiculous this one zany thing I did is. Like you normally see that with games, but I haven't seen anything like that yet. So maybe it's just taking people a little longer to figure it out. Yeah, people saying they can't hear the lawnmower. So that's for the best. It is uh, the nice thing about these Shure microphones is uh, you get more than like a foot away from them. And you, they don't really pick much up, which is great for this kind of thing. All right, we can sell the great axe. Speedy replies, not great for us. The dagger, oils. Touch me and I'll bite your fingers off. We'll send that to camp. Same with you. All right, we shouldn't really need any weapons from him. He's not going to have much for us. Um, what we actually probably will do is go ahead and grab heavy armor for ourselves. And the arrows of roaring thunder, those are going to come in clutch later. Until Roland shows off his thunder wave. Depends. How many people are dumb enough to ask? I already told you I don't have it. <laughs> True. How stupid are you? Yeah, we can sell that flail. We're never going to use that flail. I don't like the effect. 
Looking for steel? I have, well, something close. Gabriel says, I want to do a failure run where you pick the weakest thing possible in every instance. Uh, I, I know the kind of thing you're talking about. I don't know if there's like an official name for it, but I, I could see somebody trying to do that. I think that would be interesting. Oria says, I want to watch your stream, but don't want to get spoiled. That's that's fair. I don't blame anybody for uh, holding off, frankly. All right, so from here, we can go to the goblin camp and deal with that. Which we should be able to mostly talk our way through, thanks to all of our skill proficiencies. One thing I really love about having a, a face character is this goblin camp, because you can just talk your way through almost everything in the goblin camp uh, until you're ready to actually kill the leaders. Goblins ahead. Look it, Claw. Sapper's here. Unless you got enough. As the symbol glows. Dumbass, have I just killed them all before? Uh, yeah, yeah. It's uh, So we could actually summon... Um, some help in to do that, uh, but it's it's usually just not necessary. Okay, so I think our biggest bonus is deception. You will. It's nice to have this across the mug. Them's the rules. You follow them now, or you follow them dead. Do it, or don't. You <laughs> bloody ranger. Right, we're going to throw shit at them and just fight them. <laughs> All right. Allow me to demonstrate. They didn't like our persuasion option. Well, that's all right. This fight's not that bad. I won't give in. And says, can you get the leader in your into your camp? Um, are you talking about Minthara? Not sure what you're referring to there. Fantastic repost from her. These boots have seen everything. All right. Nice. Use our bonus action to heal up a little bit there. Uh, am I skipping all the dialogue because it's my second playthrough? Technically, this is the third. I've got two running concurrently right now, so whichever one actually finishes first, I suppose, would be the third, but I have played through, yes. Oh, fine. For whatever reason, they didn't want to go. I 
really don't want to waste a spell slot on killing this guy, but I don't think I can actually reach him with Gale. <laughs> That's annoying. Uh, Ciro says, hey man, how's it going? Pretty good. How's it going for you? Dom says, I think I'm on track with leveling on my own playthrough where I try to talk my way out of a fight if I can, but I'm missing out on XP by not doing those things. Uh, are you? Uh, no, not really. So you get a lot of XP rewards even for talking your way out of fights, uh, or at least a comparable amount. So you'll wind up in the same place roughly either way. Ah, man, he hit the reinforcement thing. That's annoying. But now we gotta kill the two reinforcements. Because Shadowheart can't hit anything. them to come to us a little bit. Actually just skipped their first turn for some reason. For like half a second, I thought she was going to be smart enough to not walk into the cloud of daggers, and then she did it anyway. You bow, or you break. Dom says, how often will I be streaming this playthrough? Uh, a few times a week until we get the achievement at the very least. Um, I, I don't have the free time to stream every single day, but uh, Thursday, Friday, and Saturdays, I will probably try to stream until it is done, which realistically I don't think will take too long. We'll probably be done in a, a few weeks at most. On we go. At the ready. Have Gil drop that. Get one of his spell slots back. Tet says, how do you get that achievement? Uh, one level in every class with no respecking. Off we go towards the main camp. Mancho says, love your reviews. Keep up the amazing work. Thank you. I appreciate it. Kind of you to say. How do I see Celasta versus BG3 and their implementation and ideas around the classes? So... So last is more rules as written, um, whereas Baldur's Gate 3 is more about the, the role-playing of said system. Sounds like they've captured themselves a bot. Oh, All right, see if the goblin vendor has anything good for us. Those are actually not bad. Those are great for our character, because that's just two weapon damage to our ranged attacks. That's pretty much all we need right this second. Get moving. 
I will replace our basic gloves and then we'll give those boots to her for the extra jump distance at the moment, which will help her out. Do I think brewing potions is a viable way to make some money in this game? Uh, the ingredients are a bit too rare to use it for like a money-making endeavor, but theoretically you could do a little bit of that. Fragulous crown and with scepter a braid. <laughs> Alright, we can interrupt Volo and then he'll get taken inside. Then we can rescue our owlbear cub over here. Right, yes. Well now, you Gotta do it far. Simple. Like They're I using say, the owlbear cub easy. as a better contenders than you. <sighs> then you don't want a entertainment piece, getting people to chase it, but we can invite the owlbear to our house or our camp, rather, so to speak, and then we have to either pay for it or intimidate this goblin into uh, As dealing the with it. Glows, power courses through you. Authority. Though realistically, we are doing them a favor because owlbears mm. uh, are going to massacre all these goblins. Chicken. Right, go on then. Fat bird's yours. Don't need the asshole. Uh, are the items you get as a reward available again later if the quest or merchant is killed prematurely? Uh, no, not not typically, unless it's like a generic sort of item. So there's that one saved. Now we're gonna loot a bunch of stuff around the place before going in. We can pass another check here with Crusher. As the symbol glows, power courses through you. Authority. Something. A disgusting waste of Stonecraft. Is this game dethroning Wrath of the Righteous is my favorite game, someone asked. Um, it's... It's getting there. Um, I'm gonna play through all of it and like do all my playthroughs, and then I'll probably have like a, a proper discussion sort of video talking about it uh, alongside the other content I'm gonna do. But I haven't fully made up my mind yet. Um, I would say the biggest thing that's holding this game back for me is just that I don't like Fifth Edition that much. But otherwise, it's pretty great. Harry says, love all the content and loving BG3. Glad to hear it. I'm just glad to hear people are loving this game as much as I am, to be honest. Spend so much time covering CRPGs. That kind of... Thanks for that, Lazel. That was uh, not helpful at all. Thanks for jumping into the trap I was actively disarming. Aguana says, what edition do I like the best? When it comes to D&D, uh, 3.5 was my favorite, which is uh, no surprise since I really enjoy Pathfinder, which is based off of that rule set. If you read some of the notes here, you can find uh, one of the goblins is trying to hit on Minthara, which is kind of funny. We can use this elixir to gain an extra spell slot for the day, which is kind of cool. No time to rest. No one back home will ever believe this. Still, some more stuff around here to loot though before we actually go in. There's a lot of loot you can find just laying around the goblin camp. Does the difficulty in Tactician take away from your enjoyment at all compared to Wrath of the Righteous? Uh, no, not not really. Um, so, I've, I've talked about this a lot previously, but unfair difficulty on Wrath of the Righteous is not something I enjoy. Uh, it, it's a little too much, in my opinion. Um, I actually prefer playing both the Pathfinder games on Core. Which is, like, it's a challenge without getting just ridiculous. Because on Unfair, if you're not completely min-maxing, you're going to have a really bad time. 
And it's possible, but it's just, it's a, it's a level of tedium that I just don't enjoy. So Tactician here being a little more lenient, and for instance with my Cleric build that went up recently, I was able to take some thematic choices without just min-maxing it to death, and that can be fun. Like, I, I enjoy power gaming to an extent, but being able to also mix in a few roleplay options I think is for the best, because it's a video game at the end of the day. Uh, Bobby B says, what makes 5e worse than other D&D rule sets? So here, I, I wouldn't ever say that it's worse. It's just different. Um, the purpose of 5th edition D&D is to provide you a rule set while still giving you options for role playing. And in that, it succeeds. I think 5th edition does exactly what it was designed to do. Um, it's just not as fun if you're into like the more mechanical, like crunchy rules side of things, which is a personal preference of mine. Um, but I don't, I don't think there's anything wrong with 5th edition D&D. Emil says, how many levels of Paladin do I put on Shadowheart? Uh, just two. That's really all you need. I, I like to give her a little more melee damage in certain instances, and... Like, so normally what I'd do if I wasn't doing this achievement run is I would respec her stats to make her actually useful. And then the two levels of Paladin would uh, help her be able to Divine Smite things, which can be useful in the early levels before she gets all of her Cleric spells going. I remember correctly. Looks like the booze got the better of the dig spot right here. Actively unconscious. All right, we can jump down, grab some more potions. Oh, the heck! The map glows, but you feel nothing in response. Your lithid power is beyond reach until you rest. <laughs> As the symbol glows, they're all gonna jump down. I'm gonna have to do this every time. Authority. Did I find that the cleric crit build trivialized things at all on Tactician? Um, to a degree. Uh, there were some boss fights that that build just deletes. But. At the same time, there are bosses on Tactician that that, like, you can't one-shot them, so there are still a few fights that were decently challenging, but uh, sure, there were certainly moments where I was like, well, that was a lot easier than I thought it was going to be. It's just about going to do it for loot. There are a few things over here you can grab, like a couple chests, but they never have anything good. We can go talk to this goblin over here, though, on the tower. Is there a way to kill the three leaders without aggroing the entire goblin camp? Um, not really. You can... You can kill almost all of them very easily, but they will eventually all aggro on you. You can just kind of uh, mitigate it to a point where you're only fighting a couple at a time anyway. The mark glows, but you feel nothing in response. Your elected power is beyond reach until you rest. Oof. There we go. Blah. All right. Now 
we're gonna head inside. Alex says, hey everybody, how's it going, man? Yeah, so the main thing to keep in mind with the goblin camp is uh, trying not to fight everything all at the same time if you're trying to, if you're not siding with them actively on a more evil based playthrough. Most of them can be like cornered. Alright, Gale needs another item, which is fine because we've got a bunch specifically for that purpose. Then we're going to persuade and intimidate our way through. Ain't no part in here. We're doing the absolute. Alex has been enjoying the videos. Glad to see you live. I appreciate it. Appreciate people stopping by to say kind things. It's always nice. Your lithid power is beyond reach until you rest. Rocket, you here to see Priestess Gun? Boss Rev, she bloody racket. Okay. Shadowheart notices this is a temple to saloon, or at least it was. Okay, so the priestess is the easiest one to single out. Priestess Gut needs to touch you too. You ready? Brace yourself. Ma she pro-dark. The vision dissolves away. Your mind's... Don't want to get in. Maybe I can help with that. Because you can very easily, just through regular dialogue, talk her into heading towards her room by herself, and then you can just... annihilate her while no one's looking. Edward said, is a no-kills playthrough possible? Um, I don't know for sure. I... Probably not, just because there are some instances where you're kind of forced into a fight in specific areas, but uh, theoretically you could skip a lot of stuff. I don't know if you'd go full Boy, passivist, in. though. I ain't waiting around. Okay. <laughs> sort of... Now we can just kill her, though. Another parasite collected. It might be useful. And there's one leader down. Another parasite. Pick up her keys. Another That's the super easy one to kill. If you go to her, like, secret hideout over there, there's a passage to the Underdark that way. But we can come over here and have a fair few unique interactions in all these rooms. We can save one of the adventurers that was caught way earlier. Or you can just, you know, Say we'll take over. The continue below. to let him suffer if but you, you want to. nothing in response. Your lithid power is beyond reach until nah. you rest. This one's a hard check to pass. You? I'll believe that when a human not face the prisoner. Consider the implements provided. How you got? Being <laughs> soft. This is good. See, either way, though, they wind up leaving. I bet we'll even get some. That man hangs slack from his chair. The man caught. Away. Please. Please. He can tell you what artifact they were looking for, which is called the Night Song, which is a, a separate thing. Please. That's all I know. Thank you. And then, if you want, you, you so can much. let him free, and he'll kind of escape out of side passage. 
how would I rank the acts of the game? Um, the first one's probably the best overall. The city's fantastic, and the Act Two's probably the weakest, in my opinion. Thank even you, if it does have some fantastic stuff. I, I better go before they catch us. I should be able to make it to the Grove on my own. And he just kind of sneaks out that path. But if you go down there, there's nothing over there to find, really. And then this guy is a cleric of, I forget the name, but the god of pain. Ah, are you also here to pain without purpose? Forgive me. Please, let me. And then we can finally go rescue Valo in this room. You know, I had the soul. Don't go bothering my pigeon. What's it to ya? Nah. The, the mark glows. But you feel nothing in response. You are a lithid power. He's the... I guarantee the story. We mustn't tarry, but I hate... And you can let him go to your camp, which can set you up for a few more interactions, especially later. Uh, Arctos asked, is this my favorite game behind Wrath of the Righteous now? Or uh, beating Wrath of the Righteous? Um, answered this a few times, but uh, I'm, I'm waiting to fully decide. It certainly has a lot of potential, though. All right. Uh, Halsen is in a dungeon over here. Though I usually wait to save him till last, because it makes the things a little more complicated if you've got him in tow. At least give me a sword! We want you dead! You dumb They're knuckle. knocking people into the spider pits Not over here. Get down there and stop complaining! Enough. Get down there and stop complaining! Ah! Aaron, uh, yeah, Aaron says, planning on streaming more? Love the videos. Uh, probably not. Like, um, it'll probably be about as usual. You know, if something interesting comes up, I'll stream something for it, but no plans to do anything much bigger than that. Okay, End so. To save the former. Minthara can also be killed relatively quietly, but it is a little more difficult. Bloody hell! What? Leave me alone! I have been. Have you. It is. There is. Perics and you have Go to their refuge and make your way inside. And then so Minthara gives you the, the biggest chance to side with them by basically favorites. telling you, uh, you to help them find the grove. The it is yes, but instead of doing that, you can just kill her. The artifact. But we chose the wrong option there. I kind of just agreed to help her out. But um, if you wanted to side with the goblins, that's kind of the way to do it. Which leads to a, another thing, but uh, even then you're not fully like locked into it. It's possible to set up a big battle that can be easier to take out the goblins uh, that way, so to speak, potentially. The village to the east. It's abandoned. Looks that way. But Scout said they heard something moving around out there. Okay, as to recruit this drow, you have to do an evil run. Yeah, there's uh, there's no two ways about it. You have to do an evil playthrough to recruit Minthara, but it is possible. However, uh, because of what you have to do to recruit Minthara, you will permanently lose Karlak and Will. The choices required to recruit her force that on you. How many raiders do we have? Plenty of lashes, so towards the hunters, and a few pariahs to carry the powder kegs. But lucky for us. Not that hard to just set up a kill here. The main thing you gotta watch out for is this guy 
running up here and using the drum. Because he'll summon in everything else. And then, unfortunately for us, the eye um, turned back around as well there. Oh. Not having a lot of luck with our rolls on this one. Wind up fighting extra here, that's annoying. Alright. Hit Mentara once and she's dead. Okay, that's a little better. These eyes are actually really annoying because they have a ton of resistances. It can be really hard to kill these things, like annoyingly so. Taking position. Minthara is the coolest party member. Uh, so her story is like surprisingly good. For a character locked behind an evil playthrough, she is such a great companion. Uh, she has an awesome story. Pretty much be the last guy there. Okay. Swiftly now. Jordy says, is this tactician? No, we are just playing on uh, balanced for the achievement here. Ron says, what is that eye? It is a um, seeing eye that tries to pull in more nearby enemies. Basically, it's like a, a watchman that will uh, call more enemies in if it gets a chance to make a move. That goblin's in a really annoying place now. What do they need to be looking at any of us for? Is what I'm saying. We're all on the same side. Well, that should have been enough to take him out with magic missiles, which pulled those three in. Oh no, it's, no, it's still showing them as neutral. Well. So much for peace. I'll probably go hostile next, though. Victory awaits. Well, this is about the worst I've ever handled this one, to be honest. How do I think uh, Minthara companion stacks up with the other origin companions? Uh, again, Minthara has a fantastic story. It's, uh, it's again, surprising that they hid it behind a evil playthrough, if anything, but it is, it's really good. Missed on eighty percent chance. That sucks. Uh. 
trying to move her over here in case that goblin tries to shove us, which does happen sometimes. There's a parasite in that corpse. Well, I'm not gonna lie to you guys, that is about the worst that could have gone. <laughs> but it is like if you do that a, a little more smoothly, you can kill Minthara without aggroing basically everyone. Am I gonna do the story companions for each of them? Um Probably not, like, as far as, like, uh, doing this playthrough goes. We're going to try to do everything we can um, until we get the achievement, but um, that won't necessarily be, like, everything, everything. How do you manage to have high dice rolls per attack? Uh, it just depends on how you set things up. Okay. That's not really great for us, but we'll send it to camp in case we wind up using it. Same thing there. Um, we'll send it to camp just in case, but... Those actually aren't terrible for Gale. I shouldn't have wished some what armor are they? Interesting times. Oh no, it's armor, sorry. Let's move. You have my attention. Can't give up now. Nah. That mace. Yeah, we're finally gonna replace her spear with that mace. Never a dull moment. That should just about do it for the moment. Vanessa Rose says hello. Hello, how's it going? Rosso says, what's that one, the magic missiles? Oh, yeah, so magic missiles uh, is it guaranteed to hit any uh, target that's not just flat out immune to it. So it'll take some weird trajectories. Did I see the stats Larian released on gameplay earlier? I did, yeah. I was uh, looking at a few of them this morning when I woke up. Okay, what we do next is going to be based off of whether or not everything here is hostile. <laughs> but I'm not seeing anything else at the moment. Okay, we're, we're good. I don't think we turned the entire place hostile, thankfully. Dirty says you don't pick up weapons to sell or because you're speed running. Um, I don't pick up like the basic stuff to sell. It's just not worth anything. And there's like a couple gold a piece. So it's just not worth the effort. Direct me. No one stopped me. Okay. Yet. Real quick though, we do need to long rest for our abilities back either way, which is a sh we just burned through our spell slots super fast. So we still have short rests, but unfortunately, and you gods don't all right will is but her. My going to become a devil because Karlak he refused to kill karlak by virtue of having no heart we can also talk to valo while we're here i was just the druid how there that tell me that's quite impossible you know as there's not a tentacle on mm. you isn't it Oh, dear sweet. And you get some light armor for saving him. Need to find a way forward. All right, got another conversation with Will and then Karlak. Do I think BG3 will start a new CRPG resurgence? I'll be honest, Angel. Uh, maybe. In a, long time in a lot of ways, I think BG3 is lightning in a bottle. Um, I think... It will hopefully encourage devs to try, at least, but what comes of that is much harder to say. 
But, uh, you know, as somebody who God loves the genre, I certainly hope victims. that we get a lot defense. of great games as a result. Uh, Kaguna says, uh, I meant a video on summarizing each character's story. Uh, maybe. I have some stuff planned, but it's I a little too early to be like, I we're definitely you, doing this Every thing. thrust of my blade and every flame I sparked was for the good of the coast. Another dream sequence. But you're desperate to be rid The parasites are merely a symptom of a greater sickness. <laughs> Were it not for my protection. Health. Are you all right, we're all rested up, got our spell slots back. Volo's gonna try to perform surgery on us, so we'll just go ahead and go. <laughs> Some of that stuff to lay Zelda Lightner pack a bit. Zandu John donated 10 pounds and said, Yo, Mortem, what difficulties, if any, do I envision for this crazy build? Um, I imagine some of the boss fights in like Act 2 and stuff, the things we can't just talk our way out of, are going to get painful. Just because we're uh, effectively down a character by making this kind of bizarre build. It's been working so far, though, so maybe I'll be wrong, but I don't know how it's going to pan out. Uh, Dr. Sita says, why don't do the surgery? Um, because I don't feel like it. <laughs> and also the roleplay implications of someone performing like what is almost a lobotomy on your character is uh, unsettling to watch. But the eye as a perk is pretty nice, granted. All right, and then here is our last leader. Who has a sequence where he's trying to speak to dead, this mind player. You ever talk to a dead squid? Her mind focuses. Her suspicion cannot be aroused. The new heart seizes. Under questioning, the creature might recognize you as its killer. The, the memory fades and, the, the use. and they can Your try to point sword. you out but if you pass this persuasion check you can uh, let it go because that mind yeah. player uh, the cool saw you escape no the nautilus <laughs> see she's mounting an attack on that blasted grove say that again cuz i uh... all right Either way, though, this eventually leads to this fight. The goblins aren't too big of a deal, and neither are these guys, but he himself can be. Ideally, what would happen is he would run this way and i just knock him into the pit, which would be super funny. System Shaka says, hey man, love your videos. I appreciate it. Peeper the Divine said, this is the, this is the absurd run, and yes, yes it is. Now we're going to try to get to high ground with him. Guiding bolt hit. Oh, 
people ask me about the achievement. Uh, whether or not it's pretty rough has yet to be determined, but the achievement itself is multi-classing into all 12 classes on a single character without respecking. Fedon says, what happens to the loot if you knock him in the pit? Uh, he drops all of it, but most of these early guys don't drop uh, much of anything super important. Hoping we were gonna get more damage out of acid there than that. That was a really bad acid program. Uh, Peep asks if it can be done on easy difficulty. Uh, it has to be at least balanced because uh, you can't multi class on Explorer. Okay, so. Ah, oh, man, the ones over there are good. That's annoying. Oh, good grief. That guy's just running and aggroing everyone. And he doesn't seem to be in combat at all. That's really annoying. I think the PS5 version will hold up well. Uh, I certainly hope so for the people playing on that platform, but um, I don't play enough on consoles to really have much of an opinion there, to be honest. One, oh, good grief. Not fall before my time. A lot of garbage rolls on this fight. Stay focused. 
might have to reload this one. This is just not going our way at all. We'll play it out though, see what happens. They're gonna run around and kill everyone. Cause why wouldn't they? Of course, I failed to check, why wouldn't I? Alright, I guess we're just gonna reload this one. Even if I win it, it's gonna be a huge hassle at this point. That sucked. That's what happens sometimes. Bad RNG or... You get fights where you just wind up leaving everything with one HP instead of actually killing it. To a dead squid. Now's your chance. Try to reposition the party during a dialogue. I mean, you can, but it's not usually super necessary. Um, fifth edition D&D is like positioning isn't unimportant, especially with like the drops into chasms and stuff. But like, it's not that big of a deal. drum beat over there, so that's kind of annoying. Kidding me? A miss on a ninety-five percent. I am fury. I am death. <laughs>
very annoying. Can you kill all these goblins and still be friends with Minthara? No, in order to recruit Minthara, you need to side with the goblins. Fold says it looks worse than the last time. Yeah, this is just not going my way. I don't think I've ever had this much trouble with this fight. Um, normally this is not difficult at all, but what else is new? Wouldn't be a stream otherwise, I suppose. Going a little better for us, though hilariously I think we just uh, aggroed those spiders. That's fun. Normally they just die when you knock them down there. Looks like the spiders aren't hostile. I think they're just in combat with that guy. Normally, stuff just dies from the fall. That was ridiculous. Get a spell slot back and keep rolling. Yeah, I was a little worried those spiders actually aggroed on us. Um, normally when you knock stuff down there, like just the fall from up here is usually enough to kill them. But luckily they were just killing that guy. That said, that is all of the goblin leaders. That's our job made a little bit easier there. Now we can go grab Halson and be done with this place for the moment. Unless we want to come back and try to get to the Underdark from inside here. Pick up all these bombs and whatnot, though. Wit 
hearts and blades always sharp. Faith Breaker's a pretty great versatile Warhammer. I'll take this way. Uh, playing another Warlock? No, we are doing a uh, Jack of all trades, so one of everything. Is balanced in this game similar to Core and Pathfinder? Uh, not, not really. No, um, Core and Pathfinder is probably very much so harder than this uh, really ever tries to be, honestly. But that's just not the the point of the system they're trying to go for here. We can pick up our scroll of Speak with the Dead. Uh, Jonas asked, without spoiling, what has impressed me the most about the game so far. Um. I enjoy how much the production quality is there. Like most of the time CRPGs are, uh, you know, not basically AAA productions. So seeing one like that with that just incredibly high production value is fantastic. And then that combined with all the sort of smart changes they made to 5e to make it a little more interesting than the base system is the things that are impressing me the most, I would say. All right, there's some Infernal Iron for Carlax Quest, a bunch of gold, spring step boots, those are really great. Those are fantastic gloves. The amulet is whatever. Okay. So we give the gloves to Lazelle because she finds herself outnumbered all the time. And that gives us extra damage, which is a little bit better than those, though those aren't bad by any means. We'll send those to camp for the moment. Still alive, so that's progress. Jordy says, I really enjoy your cleric build, but I feel like it's a bit squishy. Um, it certainly can be. It really just depends, like, especially on Tactician, where everything's kind of hitting you harder in general anyway. Um, if you stack the AC as much as possible, it kind of helps with that. But because you're going last so much because of the low initiative, if you're not buffing it, uh, it can be really easy to get killed which is why I tried to call that out in that video in particular. Ah, we're going to send those to camp. We don't really need those right now. What to do? Lawrence says, you don't take all the stuff. Is it recommended you don't do that? Uh, it's just for my own sanity. Just trying to manage the inventory a little better, really. And uh, there's more than enough gold in this game, so you don't need to pick up everything, everything. All right. Now we can go find Halson, which... Uh, the ready. Shouldn't be too bad because we basically killed everything in here already. Can more or less just walk around the corner. Go up and over here. Loki asks what the achievement is, and that is the one level in every class without respecking. Scrub Gamer asks if the old NPCs are in the new game too. Uh, there's a lot of returning characters. Not like literally all of them by any means, but there are many returning characters, yeah. Something good here, I hope. Always room for more? Okay, with any luck, this one won't go quite as poorly as that last one did. breaks out. Where are... Okay, there's... 
feel like I remember there being more fighters involved in this. Certainly not complaining, though. Alex says, can Gale actually end your game? Um, I mean, he'll kill just about everybody if his uh, ability goes off, unfortunately. Brock asks about Karmic Dice. I believe it's turned on right now, but uh, I don't think it makes much of a difference either way, to be honest. down. I'm gonna start. Not exactly where I wanted you to go, but okay. You got a turn or two before they manage to break down the gate. Shadowheart is in web because, you know, God forbid she be useless, you know, useful in a single fight in the early game. I don't really want to waste spell slots on this because it's just not going to be super difficult. I think Act 2 is really where the challenge is going to come from, though. Can you recruit Minthara and murder the other two goblin leaders? Ah, uh, potentially. I can't say I've ever tried. Wouldn't make much of a difference, though. How many significantly different endings do I think there are? I, I would say there's about five, like, major endings. And each of those has like a bunch of variations depending on what you do. I was like, where'd the goblin go? Oh, what? There you go. That gets rid of the spider. Nice roll in my favor. Do I think the Jack of All Trades build will be strong around level 10? Uh, probably not, honestly. Um, I don't think it's going to be stronger than like anything else, really. But I think it will be weirdly good at passing a ton of skill checks. What's the best party composition? Uh, I mean, that's a subject of debate, to be sure. But for me, I like the standard wizard, cleric, fighter, rogue, you know? Like those general archetypes. Maybe not like literally those classes, but something along that line. All right. Pardon the now we found Halson. Either way, I owe thanks. That he must knows be where these enchantments are placed. If you want to find a cure, 
You must head there and discover Tells us about how Moonrise the Towers, which is Act 2. Not, not and now we just got to go back to the Grove and talk to him. And also take care of a few other odds and ends now that we've taken care of the Goblin Camp. Doing that should get us to level 5. We're pretty close as it is. Can't slow down. Yeah, the amount of dialogue options is going to be through the roof thanks to all the classes, all the proficiencies. We'll be able to do a lot there. Uh, Zephyr says, will I be learning second and third level wizard spells? Uh, no, it shouldn't really affect spells known. I'll wind up with a decent amount of spell slots um, because of the classes we'll wind up taking, but uh, realistically, we won't be able to do much with them. Uh, which class would I consider playing solo? Um, probably something like an assassin gloomstalker mix. The uh, standard edge lord. Do you know how it goes? Not reaction. My faith will guide me. All right, we're gonna grab our guaranteed crit on Gale with these other two powers we've got. Can't give up now. And then, okay, we'll go ahead and go talk to Halson since that should just about wrap that up. Which CRPG combat do I like the most? Um, I like Wrath of the Righteous's uh, Pathfinder 1E system like the most when it comes to combat. What class do I think would fit well with a full tadpole character? Um, I think a lot of classes could fit into that, but I think stuff like Warlock makes the most sense where they're kind of like already searching for power. Scout, just I took a collection. I think wizard makes a certain words. amount of sense as well, because like wizards are about like thirsting for knowledge and a pursuit of power to some degree, just kind of by default. So I think even a little bit of that makes sense. So you got you got some options there. refugees gold they're packing up because like why not you know all right and then we go talk to halson who chews out kaga for being awful which is deserved so First we're gonna sell stuff though you scat of course Just about do it there. Do they fix the spell slot issue with Sorlock yet? Uh, not to my knowledge, unless it's been patched in like the last day or so. Um, people who are wondering, uh, you're supposed to be able to use Warlock slots to like cast other stuff for your uh, spells, but so far in game that doesn't really work. I assume that's what you're referring to. You took it upon yourself to undertake the right of thorns. I ought to exile you from this place forever. Instead, I shall listen to the explanation that you owe me. An error, most grave master. I beg your grace. Grace is bestowed by nature, not me. You will stay as a novice anew. You have forgotten the ways of the druids, the natural order of things. It is up to you to prove the lessons have been learned once more. So as you say, and so it is done, master. I like that scene just to uh, see Kaga kind of grovel because, uh, you know, she tried to kill a kid. Jesus. Speak to Wrath. He will rip tomorrow. All right. And then that sets us up for the, like, climactic end of Act 1. Not me.
which we can do basically whenever we go to camp the next time. <laughs> Gabriel says, hashtag Kaga did nothing wrong. Absolutely not. Did I ever team up with the Shadow Druids? Um, I can't say I've ever deliberately um, like sided with them during that conversation or anything. Um, I'm doing a Druid playthrough right now where I might think about it because like that option's a little more like uh, in your face. But theoretically, it shouldn't really change too much. All right, we gotta find Wrath. I feel like I walked by him. Yeah, there he is. It might have been done. The uh, Hypno Toad says, no, Do I play I real time with pause or turn based in these games? I've played so many of them that times. I honestly kind of just stopped caring. I think like, you get to a point where uh, you just kind of know what to expect from each, so it's just not a big deal anymore. But we can collect our reward by putting the rune in there and then turning all of these runes on. which gives us this Sorrow Glaive, which I gotta be honest with you, is not that great. Like, it's, it's fine, but it's not awesome. That said, we're actually gonna use it just because Sorrowful Lash might be useful for us, which is uh, the Thorn Whip cantrip that it, I wanna say transmutation off the top of my head. Rodolfo says, is Mintharo worth it as a companion in terms of content? Uh, very much so. She has a fantastic backstory. I'm surprised they hid it behind an evil playthrough. That is a great robe for Gale. No one stopped me yet. We can also loot a few more useful things in these crates. Awesome. Okay, now we need to talk to the Smith Damon before we do anything else. Otherwise, he will leave and Carlac won't to get to do her thing in Act 1. For frontline damage dealer, do I go Carlac or Lazel? Uh, I typically go Lazel because she's just already a fighter. Um, I think, like, Battlemaster fighter is like my favorite frontline melee damage dealer just because they can control the battlefield so much uh and so just as a result barbarian's not quite my speed hypnotoad asks if i actually enjoy the games i'm playing um yeah all the time, man. Um, so I, I mentioned this a lot, but like I was playing games like this before I ever started doing it for YouTube. This is literally just how I've always played them. If anything, I just get to do it more now. Okay. Do a quick swap to Carlac. Glad to have an ally. I had a whoever perhaps we truly have it if you're sure. Fine. Another visit from the Golden Paladin. It said we'll get the answers we need about the tadpole if we infiltrate the cult. Indeed. Ace. Uh, Joss has how I deal with uh, burnout from gaming when it's your job. So 
I so, love sorry, playing video games. I mean, so like, it just doesn't come up for me as much as people when, seem well, to think. Soul but coin is a... in general, uh, the soul fact that I just love doing it helps. I also play a lot of games Devil's from different with, genres. Luck, I mix them up a little bit. I'm not really on a strict timeline. I also work from home and kind of get to do whatever I want. So the the burnout from games just like isn't substantial to me. I think people uh, tend to exaggerate it a little bit. Like at most, sometimes I don't feel like recording my voice for the day because like I hear myself talk so much doing this as a job that it's just like enough. <laughs> but uh, that that's about it. The games themselves don't burn me out. All right, there is Carlax thing done. Can't really do much more with him for a moment. Any tips as to where to get uh, better weapons? Um, the the good stuff doesn't start showing up until like the very end of Act One in the Underdark and the Mountain Pass and some of the soldier. Act two areas. So the, the first area really? roughly doesn't have the best weapons, really. Am I quiet in my house from too much talking? So uh, I, I'm, I'm a really quiet point. person just generally. Like All if right. you were to meet me in real life, I'm not a super talkative guy, but uh, people hear me talk for a living. So <laughs> it's kind of at odds with each other, really, but it kind of is what it is. Take me. What I wouldn't do, do I have a normal course. nine to five? Uh, no, I used to, though it certainly wasn't uh, nine to five, but YouTube's my full time job. Do you need to rotate companions pretty regularly for the full story? Uh, ideally, if you want to see all of them and actually get their interactions, um, you don't need to do it a ton, but uh, a little bit at the very least, yeah. Okay. Now we're going to do the big party at the camp scene. Which should push us to level five. Am I going to do both the mountain pass and the underdark? Uh, yeah, yeah, that's the plan. Um, Merloyd asked what I did before YouTube. I was a... Uh, I had a salary job, like managing uh, a business and like sales stuff. Do I take notes while gaming or after a session? Uh, yeah, sometimes, especially when I'm uh, doing a review. Where is... I think he's up here. Gotta find Zevlor. Yeah, there he is. Do I recommend Goblin Camp before going to the monastery stuff? I mean, ideally, but you don't necessarily have to. All right, let's talk We're to Zevlor, to get to the camp scene Next. underway. Have a drink. I'm fine. Uh, Lucy, oh, I'll take her her off. Can no, have a no. An bit of a party with all of the uh, tieflings. <laughs> are easier to Though, realistically, if you were romancing a character, this is where a lot of that would come up, but you can talk to uh, all the tieflings you've helped out, if any are, you know, still alive. Be... I need an angle. Any ideas? Fit. That. But we're gonna go to bed because this is where you'd get like your romance scenes I and stuff. But uh, the not really our goal here. It's extremely. I suppose it was too much to hope we were going to be cured here and now. Any who linger are twisted by. If you can find this place, All right, Halson tells us to where to go next, which is Moonrise Towers Act 2. Man, I was hoping that would be just enough to get us to level 5, but we are, like, painfully short. Uh, do I play any tabletop games? Not so much these days. Uh, in high school, I played a lot of them. Uh, I still have a ton of the books, like, <laughs> from that time, and then uh, I still buy a lot of them just because I really enjoy it. But, uh, I like, realistically, I don't have the time or people to play with to play a lot of them. Okay, so what was I doing? Um, now that that is done, 
We're going to start moving that way, but we need to deal with anti-ethyl and then clear out a few of these quests, which are mostly going to sort themselves out once we start doing the Underdark stuff. So we're going to head to the Blighted Village, head down the well and deal with the Spider Matriarch, which should put us towards moss, level five. The well looks unremarkable. Dry stones. The coin disappears into the... You could spin a cloak from all these cobwebs. How many playthroughs am I anticipating for 100%? I would say I have about seven more at a minimum, including this one for the achievement here. Before I would consider it done anyway. Okay, we can go this way for some fancy boots, but we've got one fight before the spider matriarch. I would like to hit level five before we go fight anti-ethyl. Fierce Melon says this is the one of every level achieved. That is correct. Which way is the nearest library? Are you able to do both the uh, Mountain Pass and the Underdark in one playthrough? Yeah, yeah, you oh, can do both. Ahead. Shouldn't mind my step. Okay, I've never actually had any trouble with this fight, but uh, given how my uh, luck at streaming this has been going, better save it beforehand. YouTube says, hey man, glad to see you doing well. I appreciate it. Curious Nerd asks, is there level scaling in BG3? No, there is not. All right, so we got the Edder Caps and the Spiders there. Who has, yeah. The bomb did some decent damage. Turn one, sure. They usually try to web you and then spit acid at you, but they will eventually try to climb up here. Is BG3 diminished experience when you have not played the first and second games? Uh, no, no, not at all. Um, they're, it's still great in spite of those things. You don't need to avoid them though anymore. Oh, okay. Shadowheart did something for once. Good for her. I don't know what it is with, like, Lazelle in particular and, like, a disappearing UI, but it, it sure happens a lot with her. Ugh, great. Hold on. I gotta save it and reload it to clear her UI problem. said she got in webbed so that's pretty annoying but try to hit the spider not bad <sighs> nice 
Nice. Being able to at least crit with a bow and arrow has been doing us a lot of good so far. Matt says I've had that UI bug happen a bunch of times. Yeah, it always seems to be with Lazelle too, which is strange. I've never had it happen to another character. Do I feel like any of the classes are underpowered? No, not really. Like this is a pretty uh, simple game from like a power gaming standpoint. So even even the ones that might be technically underpowered like have their moment to shine. All right. Now we've got these editor caps. That one's in a weird place. I don't know where that one's going. That thing's dead as soon as its turn starts, or at least it should be. Cloud of Dagger should do at least like eight or nine damage at that level. What's a good subclass for Ranger? Uh, Gloom Stalker is always popular. One thing necessary asks about the best druid subclass, but that's uh, that's highly subjective. It depends on what you want to do. Like I, I personally uh, really enjoy Moon for all the shape shifting, but uh, I mean you could do a lot of things. Spore is pretty popular because you can do some cool stuff with it. How am I not level five? Good grief. here and loot some stuff before fighting the spider matriarch over there. How does this place in my own ranking of CRPGs? Uh, I guess it's definitely up there. I think it's mostly just contending for the top spot at the moment. Okay, let's see if I can set this up properly. Softer than a whisper. With a lucky roll, it's actually pretty easy to one-shot the spider matriarch when she walks over here. See if I can pull it off. May the gods take you first. Yeah. <laughs> first try. Light on my feet. How am I gonna deal with the baby spiders? Uh they're not gonna spawn because I killed it in one hit. What's the contender? Uh Wrath of the Righteous. Okay, now we're level five. Save just in case we get a crash. Uh, Jano asking about if uh, you miss any cool loot. Uh, not really, that spider only drops, I believe it's like a, a robe that buffs poison damage or something. It's, it's not super useful. Okay, for our fifth class, what do we want to pick up? Um, 
I don't think it's going to matter much at this point. Like, I don't think there's, like, anyone that's like, this is the thing we need at this point. I'm tempted to go War Cleric because that lets you, when you make a weapon attack, make a, a second one as a bonus action. And, like, theoretically, that would be useful for us. I think that's what we're going to go with. Uh, whether or not it actually proves useful. And then, I, I mean, even a single level Guiding Bolt's not bad, so... I think that's what we're going to go with. Uh, for our Deity... Um, I think Ogma is like the most fitting for a jack of all trades. Just because it's like knowledge, you know? I think that's what we're going to go with for level 5 here. Yeah, cool. So theoretically, that should let us attack twice, which, uh,. Given our otherwise compromised state, should be helpful. <laughs> Remy said, "Garl, get her glitter gold because the Excellent. build is a joke." I, Garl was like my other thought, just because it's kind of silly. Ah. Uh, any advice on the save all tiefling achievement? I don't know because I haven't. No, that's one of the three that I haven't done yet. I'm not sure if it's like every tiefling possible in that playthrough in regards to the choices you make or just like literally save everyone it is possible to save, period. Which seems like it would make more sense, but I, I haven't messed around with it to be completely sure. All right, level five spells means fireball and lightning bolt. Naturally, I don't want witch bolt, and we can drop sleep at this point for our two level threes. Uh, no, we're playing on balanced, not tactician. Dino says if you go late to the harpy fight, they already get that kid. Yeah, yeah. They uh, if you wait too long to go do the harpy fight, the the kid unfortunately doesn't make it. Blazel gets level five as a battle master fighter, which gives us extra attack. What's next, I wonder. Uh, Gale's subclass is evocation, which is a personal favorite, just because uh not hitting ourselves is a big favorite of mine. All right, we're going to grab spirit weapon for our prepared spells. We will drop shield of faith. We're not really using that one. And then anything else we can swap in as needed. Still breathing. Okay, so I think... It'd be just about good. Okay, we're going to finish off these last few spiders down here. And then Probably go fight Anti Ethel at that point before we start moving into the Underdark. Think you 
should take a lead on. Critical miss. Why wouldn't I? Have any tips on inventory management? Just do the best you can. He says, oh wow, I didn't know you streamed too. Uh, very rarely. It's not something I do a ton of by any means. that in order to use the War Priest extra attack, we do actually have to make the first attack. Okay. So we're going to make our way down here, grab that for the Necromancy of Fae. Though we're probably not going to read that right this second. I feel a breeze. I wonder what's down there. Well, talk to you. Okay, who has the most wisdom? Probably Shadow Heart, yeah. The glyphs shift gently before your eyes. Words slip into your mind, onto All your right, lips, so. forming words you don't understand. And something is trying to reply. Should be able to pass many of these wisdom checks here that get increasingly more difficult. And so we can't anymore. Moving in the shadows. They pull at you, dragging you closer. Nice. The glitches, the books. And that's as much as we can do at the moment. Still alive, so that's progress. All right, what now? Get out of the way, okay. That inspiration tag can sometimes like block what you're trying to do. It's annoying. Uh, as Ari says, Paladin of Shower getting real. Yeah, if you take uh, levels of Paladin as a cleric, um, the tag sometimes refer reference you as a Paladin of that deity. These things have stayed interesting. All right. So. If not over, then through. Loot the skeleton over here, make sure we grab the waypoint, and then we will be heading back to Auntie Ethel's. What shield is on Shadowheart? Uh, it drops off of those uh, wood woads in the swamp.
All right, technically, you can fight her up here, but uh, we're just going to go straight for her lair. You blink and the oh, is she actually going to fight? Hopefully this goes well. Time to strike. Sometimes, like I've I've been able to kill her, but if she gets too low, she just like teleports down there anyway. So I usually try to just go down there to begin with. You bow yeah. or you break. <laughs> I think I action. Oh, okay, it still worked. I was like, I hope it didn't action search earlier. Is ever easy. Now we can sneak attack. Nice. Death is but a word away. Beautiful. I was hoping I was going to be able to hit all of them there. Okay, so I can... Uh, I think what I'm going to try to do... <laughs> I don't know if it's going to work. Is do the melee attack, and then if it actually hits, I can Divine Smite, which theoretically might do the damage. Yeah, sweet. I was like, if I get this hit, she should just die. Now we just gotta kill the red caps. So it's tricky because if you can get her low enough in her lair, she'll give you an option to be like, hey, if you let me leave, I'll give you this hair that gives you a, an ability boost. But um, it's, it's a hassle to try to get that to work a lot of the times. But it really shouldn't be too big of a deal. Take the attack there to just to try to get our sneak attack in. And plus, Hellish Rebuke ain't bad. There we go. Nice. All doom. <laughs> Azara says never negotiate with evil NPCs. Solid advice. Um, in this one instance, you can get like basically a free plus one to a stat, so it, it is genuinely useful to do so. And uh, regardless of whether or not you do that, something that happens later happens if you kill her or get that ASI, so... Theoretically, it doesn't make much of a difference. I think I've made every save against hold person that they've tried to hit him with. At least so far. I probably just jinxed it. Salutations. Okay, well that was uh that was a lot easier than I so was blood. anticipating it being. No, never mind. Waiting to level five really <laughs> paid off there. Should get some rest. I need to keep sharp. Oh, that took the edge off. Your desire. Gail get his third level spell slot back. 
All's well that ends. No, not as bad as it could have. Yeah, Psionic Backlash is really good. Um, somebody saw me use that in combat there. Uh, if you can get it on every character, they will uh, all cast it. And technically, it happens before the enemy casts their spell. So if they die from Psionic Backlash, the spell they use doesn't actually go into effect, which can be very helpful. All right, and now that she's dead, we can uh, basically move to the bottom of her layer very easily. As a lot of the My magic goes away. Being as All right. as this I should do. be the last time we need to feed Seems Gale. Like we'll give him another one of the useless uh, cantrip items that Listen, we've been hoarding specifically to for that. She revealed herself to Mistra. I sought a cross. Talks about Come how he tried to, to deal with Mistra. You feel into the using its teeth. It's as long as I absorb traces of the weave from. I swear to you, I wasn't. All of this. It must feel like a now. But he can stay with us. He should stop eating our magic items now. Matt Taylor says aloha. How's it going? What's a good lore-friendly respec for Shadowheart? I, just moving her domain would be more than enough to... Like, moving her domain and fixing her stats would make her so much more useful just immediately and it wouldn't really break anything because she'd still be a cleric of Shar. like i would what literally just place? change her domain to not trickery basically okay i don't think these guys will fight me last the last time i went through here i want to say they didn't Because unless she's there to tell them to do it, yeah, yeah. Did very on. Now this part kind of sucks, no matter what, because you got to get down here without uh, setting off all these traps. That smell. Something died in here. Which is where Lazelle's extra jump in particular is really helpful. So for the small fee of eight damage. If you can pass the checks to see the vents, you can uh, shut them off, which is pretty helpful too. Why would you step directly into it? Let's move. The problem is you're kind of just guessing with where they are a lot of the time, which is why it can be uh, frustrating. But most characters can sometimes at least make that jump. Best avoid that trap. And then I found if you just are willing to take a little bit of HP damage, you can kind of just uh, skip the rest of it there. Lovely day this, for now. Mm. What do I need to do? No one back home will ever believe this. Watch how you go. There's a trap. I think it would be possible to do a run without taking any damage. Um, I sincerely doubt it. Uh, <laughs> I would never go so far as to say something is impossible, but... That would involve a lot of work and also just getting extremely lucky. Hold well, on, we're gonna slot prayer of healing real quick. What's next? And now we can save Marina. In the cage.
who's mad at us for saving her. What's up for discussion? You bastard! You ruined it! Ethel was going to bring my husband back. Back from the dead. She was just a bit longer and my child would have been born. So you can and call her this, out for trying to trade her baby to bring her husband back to life. And she's judge like, me. I have nothing. <laughs> that don't judge me line is more than I could really have done. well voice acted. But we're not done with her just yet. Death. We can pick up a wand, which will actually bring her husband back to life. There's a bunch of potions over here. Most of them have uh, negative effects. There's like one or two of them that I think are fine, but most of them are bad. All right, Staff of Crones. I like to give that to Gale. That's pretty useful early on. And the rest of them are eh. All right, so let's take us back up top. Mr. Says, uh, Mr. Echo says, have I tested co-op for this? I have not really messed around with co-op too much personally. Max Rulo says, wouldn't mind seeing one or two achievement runs in other games from time to time. Yeah, I might. Uh, streaming is a lot. Like it takes a, a lot of time and uh, it can be difficult to be on camera in front of hundreds of people trying to be entertaining all the time. Okay, so she's talking about her dead husband. We can hand her this wand you feel that will bring resurrect her husband. Bring Connor back. What? Do you feel? what have you done to him? She brings him back as a zombie. I wanted him back. Back the way he was. Not this. <laughs> you can go a lot of different ways from here. You can kill him. Or you could just like give her the wall. <laughs> and she's like, all right, well, Connor? your problem now. Connor! I don't even. But he might be. And if he is, I'll find him. Here's the wand. Good Thank luck. I'll con and come on. Perhaps using <laughs> Ethel's wand. I love that interaction. Like, it's just so bizarre. Even the power of the weave to and the fact that she just takes the wand with him and just leaves. <laughs> like, what in the world? Oh my god. Alright, and that's pretty much gonna do it for right there, and then we can now start heading towards the Underdark or the Mountain Pass. I personally like to do the Underdark first. Which we will go ahead and do. I think We've got a little more time to work with, so we'll at least get started on that. So we'll go back to the Whispering Depths. This is the easiest way to get into the Underdark, but it's, uh, it arguably puts you in the worst spot. Like, coming down from the Goblin Temple, in my opinion, is the best way to get into the Underdark. But this one's by far the easiest. Quite ready for you. But make sure you cast Featherfall or something first. Travel, Azel. It's dark around here. Broken Would be bones. a terrible shame to lose you forever. God, what's There's happening? one of the phase spiders we knocked off. Okay, but now we basically have to fight these minotaurs right away. You know, unless you, like, sneak around the side, I suppose. Alright, so... Minotaurs also don't drop really anything good, so... I like to try to knock them off as well. Oh, man, I messed it up. I hit him in the wrong spot. That was dumb.
But uh, you can actually knock the Minotaurs off too. One of them drops like an amulet that makes you vulnerable to one thing but resistant to uh, another, so. It's not bad, but it's not great. I waited a little too long though and kind of messed that up. Uh, Linus says, any tips for playing a sword and board magic class? Um, something like Cleric or Paladin is really good for that because they get a lot of uh, casting depending on how much you want to uh, lean into specific aspects of it. All right, now that we're level five, she gets her free bonus action Misty Step, so that's nice. crazy because these these guys like to jump around so I'm gonna have to wait and see what they do before I start casting spells at them too much. Yeah. Surprised they didn't try to knock me off at all. Wouldn't I not one that? I don't fancy their chances. Let's finish this. So this one is the one with the amulet, and I can tell because it's taking half damage from all my slashing. But uh, the fact that it didn't die right there is really annoying. <laughs> after this anyway, so. Does your spell damage increase when you use a higher tier spell slot? Uh, typically, not in every case, not for every single spell, but generally, yes. A little concerned about walking into my own cloud of daggers there. Like they just did. But it's all right, because we're about to Lady of Sorrows, guide us. Yeah, this. So that makes them resistant to slashing, but vulnerable to bludgeoning. So it's like, it's not bad, but uh, it's not amazing either. Very well. All right, before we go too much farther, let's go ahead and long rest, because we are falling apart here. Still Reeves says, I really enjoyed the Underdark. Yeah, the Underdark's a really cool place. I think they did a lot of uh, interesting things with it. Go talk to Gale real quick before we rest. Even in such... She preferred it when we were alone. She has a good heart. Besides, she was always Tell telling me his, I needed uh, to spread my wings, Tara. so to speak. Find mortal friends. Suffice it to say, right, go. And now we sleep. You recognize the... The owlbear. Mm -hmm. If we can pass uh, some checks, he'll join our... party. The creature got... And that Before Gale walks up and ruins it. Corrected. It'll come uh, one more time, and if you can pass that check, it like hangs around. I'm 
Munchy Dog says, hey, everyone. Hey, how's it going? All right, so up here leads to a another Minotaur, but he's going to... Uh, Fungal, I suspect. Is he going to do it? Normally, he walks up here and gets killed by the uh, temple defenses. There he goes. We just weren't quite close enough yet. So if you get too close to the temple up here, these uh, statues will zap you, but you can turn them off by coming down the back, which is where the uh, goblin entrance to the Underdark brings you. <laughs> Morin says, I wonder if owl bear tastes good. Uh, I mean... Actual bear meat tends to be really tough and stringy, so I would imagine probably not. Then again, it might taste like chicken because of the owl part. Uh, can you summon the owl bear like you can with Scratch? Uh, not that I'm aware of. You get a. Brace for a vicious battle. If you start playing, I think it's you have to play fetch with Scratch, and it gives you the ability to summon him or something like that. Um, I've never seen something similar for the owl bear. Not, well, not, uh, not in normal gameplay, let's say. All right, you can pass a few different checks to get a sword here. Slender drow blade impales the stone before you, keeping a Which, uh, I mean, realistically, we probably won't. <laughs> probably gonna have to do this with somebody else. Yeah. You can't recall anything this asset. We have no bonuses to any of those. We'll try uh, Lazo. Slender drow glade impales the stone before you, keeping a silent vigil. Still a terrible roll, but we'll waste some inspiration on it. I have a bonus of six to nine, and I keep missing this. There we go. Good grief. It feels like yeah, this you're is a pretty cool sword. Ten people for the blade. With another hard yank, the weapon slips free from the stone. Not quite as good as what we're already using uh, damage-wise, but it can be pretty handy. I wonder if that's that might be an upgrade melee for us. Yeah. For our character. Best be on my way. Okay, and then we can kill the Bulet down here. So we're definitely gonna save for that one, because uh he has a habit of knocking me off. <laughs> Best not to get too close. Strange caves distributing swords is no basis for a government. Well, I disagree. <laughs> Alright, they don't want to step into the spores. Damn them. Alright, so you gotta be really careful right here. Otherwise the uh the bullet will actually like knock you off the uh side. That way. So when it throws you into turn base, you want to kind of try to get away from it a little bit. Oh, action, not reaction. Which sadly isn't going to be possible for those two. <laughs> yeah, see? That's exactly what I was talking about. What's the idea behind this playthrough's main character? Uh, doing the best I can. <laughs> Matej says they uh, got to go, but it was nice seeing the stream and everything. That's awesome. I appreciate it. I'm, I'm aware you can quick load with F8. I just, uh, I am a creature of habit, and I would rather just click through the load screens, okay? It's just who I am as a person. <laughs> Alright. 
depending on the angle. That's either gonna throw him into the rocks or just throw him off. Yeah, there he goes. Ugh. Resurrect him and be done with it. bugged out there. He didn't take his turn. Annoying, but whatever. There's that done. Um, this is an okay armor set if you're doing like an unarmored barb or like a monk or something. It's not a bad way to go. Moving in. But this over here is dangerous. But if we just start, oh, that's cool. I do get the extra Eldritch Blast uh, charges. I wasn't sure if that would work because we weren't taking the uh, the warlock levels, but it looks like it is going to give us the extra Eldritch Blast. By one, blown up by the other. Without the without the invocations giving us the uh, extra damage, it's probably not going to be super useful. But that's cool that it still gives you the charges. Okay, there is one more thing up here we can check out before we go start talking to the Mykonids. Which is loot from the Zentarum way into the Underdark. Uh, the Zentarum hideout also has a way down, but it's difficult to get through that without upsetting the Zentarum, which is usually more of a pain than it's worth so I don't usually take this route but there is a trap trap be cautious at the bottom of the net which can burn the net which is annoying <laughs> somewhere. I know this because I've burned that net down way too many times. You can still walk up and use this mushroom to like jump up, but it's it's a lot more annoying. Am I going to build Morning Frost? Yeah, probably. I mean, we'll wind up getting all the parts for it, so no reason not to. I usually give it Don't to uh, Gale. can lockpick a bunch of these chests for some easy loot. 
Some of it kind of sucks, but. The Zentarin. Stop to sell if nothing else. Cutthroats. Useful friends. If you can afford them. Character got stuck there for a second. That was weird. Thieves tools. Always useful. Step carefully. There's a trap. A lot of people mentioning how much they enjoy the game, and yeah, it is. It is a very good. CRPG, that's for sure. I mean, I was expecting it to be good, but I think they uh, really went above and beyond on this one. can head to the Mykonids, which will give us a few quests that'll help us out. But there's a good chunk of stuff to do down here. our way in the door, but that's Funk pretty easy to do, as there are some things the Mykonid colony would like us to do, such as kill the Duragar nearby. Will I do Bual? Yes, yeah, the, uh, the Kotoa, the Kuatoa, however it's pronounced, colony down here is pretty funny. What item do I craft from the forge? I usually try to get the, uh, the adamantine uh, splint armor, because that, that is really good. And then the other one is usually just dependent on the weapon Ooh. I'm using. It's Curie. Uh, could I ask what you... One of we can meet a brethren. normal That's mind player who offers to help I... with the open your mind. mind player tadpole. This but the lava and even without the sheep, but not to worry. The design would... Oh. There may be a way to bypass uh, Timusks cause confusion in those that approach them. Your sanity. Hmm. I imagine. And he gives us a side quest. Don't meet a ton of rogue mind players, so it's pretty cool. Alright, now we can step up here. Catch a couple more side quests, like helping out Don't Thula. Don't need an antidote soon. Most likely held by the poisoner. <gasps> Do it. You can uh, give her a quick death or give her an antidote, but uh. Dwego. There's Smashed actually a me. few different oh. ways to. Heal her. It's possible to get an elixir of Sylvanas in the like Druid's Grove that deadly, cures any poison. Untreated, the poison can... Or you can get it off the Duragar that are going to be up here. Uh, 
uh, Dr. Sid asks if this is Act 2. No, not quite. Um, the Underdark and the Mountain Pass are like the ending portion of Act 1. Act 2 doesn't technically start until you step into the Shadow Cursed Lands. Galut here offers to uh, it reveals. help us out with the Duragar. Which actually is pretty useful for that fight. Which is right over this way. The big tree is also for a side quest that we'll be doing, though. Have to fight some hook horrors over there. Okay. But the Duragar over it's here. Abandoned. We're gonna clear out the map just a tiny bit though. They like to be able to see all of it. Warren asked if they could track or say what the most played classes races are, but they uh, they actually did. They put out a bunch of stats this morning on their Twitter account, kind of detailing uh, a bunch of stats from the opening weekend. Remy, or Remy says that I've mentioned that Warlock's my favorite class. Why is that? Uh, because I really loved the uh, 3.5 edition of Warlock, which plays a lot like uh, Pathfinder's Kineticist because the Kineticist was based off that version of the class. And uh, it's just something that's kind of stuck with me since then. But I, I just really like the gameplay mechanics of it. And then 5th edition, I think, actually did some fun stuff with it. But the 3.5 edition uh, was all about modifying your Eldritch Blast in a variety of ways. So you could do stuff like increase the range, how it did its damage, the shape of the blast itself, stuff like that. You could do a lot of cool stuff. Okay. Now we'll save and then we'll try to do this particular fight. This usually isn't too bad, but we'll see. All of them are invisible, I believe. What? Get! Yeah, here we go. Got someone sneaking up on us. There's a guy in here that is invisible, I believe. The boss guy. And then one of them will raise up a bunch of zombies. One shy of killing him. That was a fantastic crit for our absurd character. Hex so <laughs> says you seem like the most educated person on this game at the moment. Ah, I've just I've just played it and games like this a ton. You can kind of start to see how it all pulls together after a while. Why wouldn't it? Alright, spa here. You can raise up zombies with him, but I wouldn't recommend it, which we will get to in just a second. But he does serve as a convenient uh, damage sponge.
I know there's a guy over here, but I don't know exactly where he is, and I'd hate to miss with a fireball. I know he's in there somewhere. I can't even catch my breath. Cut it to his chase. Peter says, Hey Mortem, greetings from Hungary. Glad to catch the stream. Glad you caught it as well. Always cool to see people from other places that I'm not familiar with. See if Shadowheart can make herself useful and kill this guy before he becomes a problem. Wonderful. Right, this fight's actually going super well. Normally I have more trouble with this. Alright, he's gonna raise dead. Got to deal with all the undead and the last invisible guy. Uh, Strictly says greetings from Santa Cruz. Been enjoying the visits. Glad to hear it. We really enjoyed that people are getting some value out of it. Juan says greetings from Colombia, living in Argentina. That's awesome. All right, so how are we going to? deal with all these guys so uh, we're gonna have gale move Kaido. Daggers. And we're hitting our guy technically there but it doesn't matter that much because it's not literally our guy that invisible duragar he's got to be up here somewhere because he's a uh, like a barbarian or something if i remember correctly so he's gonna he's gonna run up and try to hit someone What's my least favorite class? Um, I would have to say monk. Um, I, I don't hate them, but I don't know. I just I don't enjoy playing monks. Is that kind of bugged out on me? Oh, there we go. Oh, there it is. Had the wrong one highlighted. Oh. I just have a hard time reconciling like the uh, the unarmed portions of it with the rest of the content. It's I can see why people enjoy playing them. It's just uh, like mentally that's where it crosses into like this is silly for me, which is silly to say about a game like this. I understand, but uh, I don't know. It just it doesn't quite land with me. Companion that I think has the weakest story. Uh, I actually made a video kind of ranking that general idea, and for me, it's Carlac, which I can't really explain without uh, spoiling anything. But in my opinion, that is the one. Nice. Ah, didn't get Cloud of Daggers down in time before she ran into it. Better than that. That's all right, because we'll take a short rest. 
and then start looting everyone. That went super smoothly, to be honest with you. So if Sovereign Glut there had survived, he would have turned on us immediately if we didn't help him attack the other one, but the other one's actually uh, super helpful, so we weren't gonna do that. So him dying in that battle is irrelevant. X says I'm still mad Carlac was in last place. Like, she's such a great, like, personality and character, but her story was just really underwhelming to me. She reminds me of a beast from Divinity Original Sin 2. Like, he's a great companion character, but his story just isn't quite on the same level as everyone else's is. <laughs> There's the antidote. The exterminator axe is pretty good if you're fighting specific enemies, but not like most of the time. That short sword's not bad, but uh, we don't necessarily have anyone to use it right now. What creatures live in waters this dark? All the bodies before we go turn in some of those quests. And there is also, yeah, there it is. I was like, there's a waypoint around here somewhere. Uh, are glaives good? I mean, they can be. There's a few decent ones. Um, not a weapon I personally like to use, but I mean, they can be as good as anything else, really. Are the set a character's dex to 18 gloves as broken as they look? Uh, they certainly can be on characters like you wouldn't normally take 18 dex, but they would benefit from it. Uh, sure. They can be incredibly useful. I think it was probably... <laughs> Crooked Wanda fireballs. Um... It was probably the smart move to move that item towards Act 2, because you, you don't get it until you're almost in Act 2, because otherwise you'd be able to min-max with it completely, but even as it stands, once you have that item, you can basically just respec a character that's even using dex to just have 18 dexterity all of a sudden without actually having to invest any points in it, which means you can spread that around elsewhere. So it's it's those items are just busted by their very nature. They're always very strong. But ultimately, it depends on how much you want to lean into it. All right, so... Now we can turn in a couple of these, grab a couple more, sell some stuff. And that's probably going to be where we leave it for today. And we've cleared out a huge swath of content, honestly. Uh, why are you helping me? But Carl's got us. She'll tell you about the uh, I don't have, I got deep but gnomes that are just having a problem in Grimforge, which is where we'll head not too long after this. He greets you with a harrow. The do you see? Indulge one demand and it only breathes enough. Then he asks us to do another thing in Grimforge. But also we get a reward in here, which is pretty handy. Is pure strength ranger with heavy armor proficiency a good idea? I mean, it can be. I mean, this game's not, uh, 
super stringent on things like that. Like, I'm, I'm doing super well with this monstrosity of a class already, so... If that tells you anything, it, it should be okay. What's in here? <laughs> Alright, and we can get some really useful stuff out of this room. One piece of a staff. The cover proudly Another thing that this explains book to be. Uh, what's going on in Grimforge. Another great role. Proves too much. What remain? There's mention here of an adamantine forge. Such would be a rare and fine. And some great items. Indeed. But the uh, the helmet we can get there gives us shrouded in shadow, which lets you turn invisible. That can be nice pretty handy. Actually, to be honest with you, we'll, we'll probably keep that for us. Because we have a lot of stealth. <laughs> the boots of speed can be pretty handy um, for some extra movement speed, but they caught like that costs a bonus action, and I've found that it can be a little difficult to uh, find a use for that when jump is already so overpowered. Sell some stuff at the vendor over here. Juan says it was great catching the stream. Goodbye. Looking forward to having a blast continuing playing. I certainly hope you do as well. Thanks for stopping by and have an awesome rest of your day. Sandwich Man says, have you went to that magical tower in the Underdark yet? Uh, not yet. It's over there. We'll be doing that uh, relatively shortly. So we're about to wrap up for today. But once I get some stuff sorted out. We're going to go over here, do the uh, tree and another side quest, and then we'll head down this way, which is where the tower is, and then uh, grab the stuff over here, like the... Uh... I forget the name off the top of my head. The spectator fight and the uh, temple over there. You can find some cool items in. Seems the shrooms. You see a fella on his own on your Matthias way says, in. says, nice to finally Dwarf. put a face to your Bailin voice. Yeah, I get, I get that a lot. <laughs> Right now. Waiting for that, like I told you already. Right. Never mind. You try to ransom him to me. And then My she useless husband. We'll ask told. you to find her husband, Balin, which she doesn't actually like that much, but. Domicistic. Nonetheless. We can finally sell all this junk we've been hanging on to. Well, Sell the Exterminator asks. It is a uh, very situational. I don't like that amulet. We're done with Sorrow. We've already got that for free. Not terrible, but not super useful either. Those, those boots actually, they're very situational, but I do enjoy them. Though we are technically done fighting spiders, sadly. They don't really come up too much after this. We're never going to use that. And that should pretty much be it there. And then you can buy a couple decent things from her. Uh, Dimitri says, hey, board, I'm a big fan. What crossbow is that you have and where do you get it? Uh, it is called Herald. And you get it from uh, helping out the Zentarum without robbing them in Act 1. It can uh, bane enemies, which is pretty handy. I think we're going to grab the I'm thinking we're going to grab the plus one scale mail because it is uh, a little cheaper and gives us also that the 15. Probably slap that on Shadowheart. 
and nobody's using light armor, so that'll probably do it for the moment. Never a dull moment. I am ready. Because at that point, that should be two extra, which outweighs what she was getting. We can sell this stuff. How does sneak attack work? Uh, it's an activated ability, so no sneak attack is uh, a separate ability that you'll activate. It doesn't really happen passively like uh, Pathfinder handles it. <laughs> Jan says I'm going to watch this muted because I don't... doesn't want to uh, spoilers, basically, but I appreciate it. The, I mean, honestly, the watch time still helps, so fair enough. All that's junk, and the, oh, uh, she had a bunch of junk for us to sell God. as well. We'll hold on to that dagger for a thing later, which is just going to help us complete a quest. Not that we really need it. Is that blood? No, never mind. Still alive. All right. So all of this Progress. junk, and we should be golden. Seems you see a fella on his own on your way in. Dwarf. Balin's his name. Just about sorted out. Uh, X says, do I experience less bugs compared to the release version? Yeah, they've already been fixing some of it. Um, I get still a little bit buggy, especially once you get towards the, the city of Baldur's Gate. But um, overall, they've already been improving it a fair bit. Natalia says, your inventory is so deep. Yeah, I, I uh, weirdly organize when it gets to that. Uh, Rodolfo asks, how does surprise work? Uh, when you surprise things, they lose a turn. That's pretty much it. But... Uh, that is pretty much going to do it for today, guys. I got uh, a few other things I've got to get ready to go do and handle today. And then I got to get a video out for tomorrow done and edited. But uh, I will likely be live again tomorrow playing through a little more of this. I imagine if we don't make it to Act 2 tomorrow, we'll be like right in front of it, I'm sure. But that is going to do it for today. Hope everybody enjoyed it. Uh, like, comment, subscribe, all the usual, Jeff. But may you wander in wisdom and have an amazing day.